What is up, Friday Nighters? Welcome to another episode of Just Another Friday Night. I think I was like late on all the cues on that one. <laughs> <laughs> this man right here is Double A, Adam Man Tim Adam. What's up, everyone? Uh, I am CM Chuck, and we are your hosts of Just Another Friday Night. Uh, your San Antonio local pop culture podcast. Uh, not the only one out there. Uh, we've come to find out, but uh, hopefully your favorite one and and uh, uh, probably our favorite one too. So we're biased, but uh, <laughs> what's going on Friday nighters? Are you guys here in the house tonight? Are we early? Are we late double A? What does it feel like? I think we're right uh, on time. Right? We're about on time. Seven twenty ish. Uh, yeah. We probably could have started about an hour ago, but we were busy. We got tired to talking. We we, we could have <laughs> did a whole episode before this, uh, whatever, but we were chatting about. Uh, uh, I didn't even know, but Double A sent me through Twitter that uh, Quentin Tarantino, uh, my favorite director, just oh. did Joe Rogan, and uh, man, it was a superb uh, interview. And then I, from that, I heard that he also did Mark Maron. So those are also two of my favorite podcasters, Joe Rogan and Mark Maron. Um, and, and I, so I heard How that episode Marin? too. How does he usually do? I know Rogan. Uh, How's Marin approach? He, he's good. He has his moments. Uh, okay. Like I, I, I hear, I go through his and hear the episodes where he does people that I really like. And, um, for the most part, he's really, he's really good. He's a really good podcaster. I, I like the dude in certain things. You know, I like him in Joker. I like him in mm -hmm. glow. He was funny. In glow, yeah. You know, yeah. Shit like uh, that, so. yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 He's good in those. He has his moments. Uh, there's some things about him. I don't agree with. Uh, oh, okay. he's very, yeah. Oddly enough, you know, before he got Joker, it was very anti comic book movie. He had a very Scorsese yes, yes, lean yes. to his whole Which thing. Which is weird because everyone's like, because then Joker came out and yeah. found out he was in there. And so. he talks about how it's different than other comic book <laughs> yeah. movies. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. you know, a lot of times I feel like this double, I'm like, if that's not for you. It is, you know what I mean? It's like, it is, it's PG 13. Well, you know, know what? We, for you, we you know? always feel, anyways, that comic movies were always meant for us as collectors, yeah. you know? And, and now everyone has opinions on these comic book movies, you know? Yeah. That were never lovers before, you know? So Tarantino had an interesting thing to say. He goes, Man, if these were to came out in my 20s when I was like super into comic books, he's like, it would have been awesome. He was like, But now it's like, you know, yeah. it's like he just yeah. says he doesn't have, you know, time, you know what I mean? So yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah. Um, Mom is here. Hi, Mom, Maria, and and cousin Yelly. Hi, Yelly. Hey, Yelly, it's been a while. How's you doing, Prima? Doing yeah, good. We're glad that you're here with us uh, tonight. Um, ah, it's Gabe in the house. It, what up, what Gabe? up, Gabe? Man, we're getting some some folks back in here. Well, uh, welcome, guys. Welcome to the show. Um, Double A, what's going on in the world of uh, pop culture? Adrenalize me, man. It's been a. Uh, I feel like it's been a while, but we it's just did an episode. Yeah. It's because you know what? Our last episode. <laughs> Was on a Thursday, yeah. so it was like a yeah, day. it was on a Thursday because it was me. Uh, I went to Dallas uh, last right. Friday. Good reason. Uh, after work, uh, I went straight over there, and uh, Saturday I finally, finally, and I didn't want to say this last week because I don't want to jinx myself. I finally landed James O'Barr, the creator of The Crow. Third time a charm. I was supposed to meet him here Very in nice. SA. He never showed up. I was supposed to meet him in Austin. He didn't show up. So finally, I read somewhere where he lives in Dallas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so okay, like, cool. Okay, so he has to be there. Yeah. You know? So I finally landed him. I took every crow item I had. He signed for free. Oh, Everything awesome, for free. man. So, Very awesome. First off, I had the movie signed by James Omar right there. Very cool. Very cool. Right in the upper left there. I'm going to take a look at this. It's a comic close. right here. It's kind of like a preview uh, before his first appearance. You know, I always love the colors, the shading, uh, the the line. You know, for some things there is no forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, crow coming in February. So yeah, that was that, cool. what you're looking at, guys, is the back of an issue. This is yeah, a, 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 yeah. It's a preview. It's weird that you know they would actually show a character coming. You know, now, now he did the writing. Though, he does he do the art? He too? does the art too. Wow, I did yes. not know that. Wow. And then so I got my cool artiste hardcover edition that Mario sold me from Authority Comics. Love that. Uh, I have that. I own that edition as well. Yeah, and it's supposed to be the definitive version uh, for that. Uh, let me see. It's got a nice uh, signing signing page in there. Audio listeners, sorry if I came in a little late. Uh, ah, you, you know how I do trying to do both. So Right there. Oh, very nice, man. Perfect. Right there. Right, right under there. The, uh, the old name. So. And then I have the poster, as you can see. He signed yeah. the poster. That's so great. now I have Ernie Hudson and James Obar. That's my wife's poster that she's had since college. Very then, cool. I was hoping he didn't have very many prints, but I did get two. This is the one I picked because I thought it looked fucking cool. Oh, yeah, I love that one, man. 
he just looks mean and awesome. Yeah, that's very badass. And then this is I one, never knew he did the art. Yeah, too. and then this is the one my wife chose. And if you see it, it has all the scars and the bullet wounds and everything. Ah, those two are great. Yeah. Man. Damn, Damn, I love those. Like the, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's badass. Yeah. Those are both badass. Very quick, uh, you know, he's uh he was a quiet dude, but I mentioned him, you know, I'm a huge fan of the crow property. I love the writing, I love the art. You know, and uh, for a guy to really kind of make his money on one property, one character, pretty yeah. crazy, you know. So, and he still writes the crow. There's yeah, still there's stories. Still stuff. Yeah, okay. there's still stuff. You know, but uh, you know, obviously, it's still that first story, right? You know, the Eric Draven story, yeah. the one we all know. Yeah. So uh, I did that, and then uh, I hit up a new comic store today called Sanctuary Comics. Uh, was able to pick up a lot. This one. This is X Force issue two. What's really key about this one? It's uh, the second appearance of Deadpool in Down comics there on the floor right there. Very yeah, good. very nice. So that usually, um, usually comic book stores usually try selling this for like twenty. Mm -hmm. You know, I got it for eight bucks. <laughs> awesome <laughs> you know? man. What uh, of Aaron B in the house? Aaron, what's up, man? Then you know X Force three. This one's also hard to get too because I was Spider Spider Man. This so. is all Lee Field art we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. I love that Lee Field art. And then, man, uh, so man he had some great. Uh, old school comics you know i needed some daredevils uh you know second appearance of kingpin and daredevil uh nice. and then you know classic you know daredevil wolverine battle very nice know? so yeah and then uh pick myself up uh finally the planet oh Earth. there we go i needed that classic story you gotta do that one one day i finally picked up a story that cm recommended oh yeah uh which he talked about a little bit uh zero point for Fortnite, Snake Eyes versus Batman. Yeah. What'd you, you know? think? What'd you think? Go I liked it a lot. Um, you know, for a lot of cult people, Snake Eyes is a, a popular character. Oh, yeah. Okay? But he's not universally recognized as, I would say, Batman. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is kind of like that boxing fighter that's really good, mm -hmm. you know, has a great record, beautiful record. You know, the guy no one wanted to face. And this is like, you know, finally getting his chance at a title. Sure. You know, at a heavyweight title. And that's Batman. You yeah. know, so. And it showed he put on a great performance. He stood toe to toe with Batman. Uh, you know, and each fight was different. That's kind of what's cool about it. They, they keep putting him in, like CM said, like 22 minutes of fight. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it would wipe it out. And they were saying, like, in the first fight, they were using so many different kind of, like, fight, fighting techniques. And then the second fight was just totally different from that first fight. Yeah. You know? And they were like, how, <laughs> how can this be? You know, how how can they fight two different styles? Right. You know, in two different fights. And it was just like, wow. You know? So he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, with, with the bet. Uh, and hopefully this kind of puts Snake Eyes more on the map. You know, as uh, that guy you see on the list more and more of, yeah. you know, comics is greatest fighter. Hopefully, you start seeing Snake Eyes because of this. Like, you know, hopefully, Batman gave him more exposure. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, when he came out in the game and appeared, because he he appeared in the game, I won't say before Batman, because I think Batman, had, they had had the skin of Batman before in Fortnite. But when it came out, I mean, to me, it was like, that's an immediate buy. Because number one, Snake Eyes has always looked badass. Yeah. And I think that's something the movies did do saying, justice like, on. They made him look. Like, like an extra cool people like us that know snake guys mm -hmm. we know how dangerous he is oh yeah you know so for a lot of people that maybe not know him mm -hmm. all right who is this guy you know yeah like for a lot of kids i, I doubt they would probably even know who snake guys is for you know four-year-olds five-year-olds six-year-olds yeah, seven definitely. Year olds, you know? yeah so hopefully, i think i had to tell my nephew even i mean that's what he i'm was, saying he was so seven hopefully, at the time but hopefully yeah. you know this gets people interested like oh wow who's you know this Snake Eyes Ninja is a, a badass motherfucker, yeah. you know. So, oh, on top of that, too, he's got his movie coming out in a couple he's got weeks. His movie right? too, so, but you know, I mean, it. hopefully, like you said, it kind of puts him on the map a little bit. Show, you know, hey, he belongs up there. Because yeah. in the Marvel DC comic uh, crossover, uh, it's pretty clear that Batman beats Captain America. It's very right. clear. It's a clear cut victory. And it shouldn't have been, you know, <laughs> one sided at all. <laughs> yeah. So, or this, maybe it should have been one sided, but the other way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for Snake Eyes, you actually, I guess, go. You know, tie tie yeah. with the back. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a victory for Snake. I Alice. definitely dug so, it. It was definitely like a, a highlight of the series so far. And I think there's two more issues after this uh, one, or three more, and there's two that are out. One we're waiting on the last one. Yeah, but nice man. I'm glad you picked that yeah, one up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then uh, is that it? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool, yeah. cool. 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 Um, Tony B in the house. He said, "What up, batches? <laughs> what up, my man? How you doing? Uh, glad for uh, you coming in tonight to hang out with us." Um, Anything else, double A, in the world of uh, pop culture that happened? Any 
breaking news, anything like that. I was hearing today that uh, Kevin Feige had kind of uh, threw some, uh, like the young people say, threw some shade at Alfred Molina because I guess he kind of dropped some. Uh, oh man, he had really? he had dropped some. Uh, I, say, I read what he said. I wouldn't really call it spoilers or whatever, but you know, he pretty much was just like. You know, he pretty much said I was the worst kept secret that Doctor Octopus is going to be in the <laughs> Spider Man or whatever, and the new Spider Man. And I guess uh, Kevin Feige probably didn't like that too much, so eh. it might be they might be writing in the death of Doc Ock in this one. <laughs> it's like, you know, man, honestly, I, I think the secrecy shit is kind of stupid. This movie's going to make a lot of money. Oh yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess too. It's like I see both ways because part of me feels like I'm like. Oh, fuck man you don't leave nothing for us to find out like it's like there's these paparazzi hanging out all around the outside it's like getting us pictures of like oh first image of the suit first image of this i'm like well damn by the time i go to the movie it's like i fucking seen everything there's no surprises you know what i mean like didn't we talk about how cool it was in snyder cut to see like martian manhunter like okay. we were like oh shit like a genuine surprise like i was like i hadn't heard or seen anything about that so to me that was fucking very cool you yeah. know yeah. but um you know, again, we talked about this earlier in our conversation where it was like a, our, our pre-recorded conversation, pre-non-recorded conversation, where we were saying uh, certain things happened back in the day and you didn't know. You didn't know what company owned what properties yeah, or whatever. There was no social media. Yeah. There was no instant access in your fucking phone to see every single thing going on, every step of the movie. So-and-so appears on set. I mean, like, you know. We all know that Michael Keaton's going to be in the, fly, the new Flash movie, mm -hmm. you know, returning as Batman. What an awesome surprise that would have been had we not known anything about that. It would have been like, oh, shit. You know, um, I was just watching uh, before I came over with AA on Twitch. Uh, some fans on Twitch did a four-hour super cut of uh, Star Wars. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. They cut in a lot of stuff from the animated series. I was watching it and seeing how it pieced together. It was so neat. So imagine a Revenge of the Sith movie, but with Darth Maul in it, with uh, Ahsoka Tano in it, like all that's in there. So it's pretty cool that uh, these fans got together and did this. They talked, they didn't talk, but in the beginning it says that this was like, you know, again, they, they're not allowed to make any money off it. They're not allowed to do anything like that. And I think it's like a one-time showing. Uh, no one's it, but it's supposed to be able to record it. It can't go up on YouTube. <laughs> so you only got to see it apparently this one time on Twitch, uh, this uh, four-hour supercut with things cut in, even from the new uh, Disney Plus series, The Bad Batch. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it was from what I saw, it was pretty cool looking, pretty neat. So, um, I heard or read from early screens of Black Widow that that movie is like super awesome. So, I okay. can't wait to see that next okay. week. Yeah, um, definitely you going to theater. Yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, uh, definitely gonna go see the Forever. But you've been back already, right? Because yeah. you saw Quiet Place. Yeah, we saw Quiet Place. Yeah, definitely gonna see a Forever Purge. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I forget weekend. you're a big uh, Purge guy. I didn't know they had another Purge movie. Now that was like a secret that I was just like, oh wow. Uh, okay, I'm making another one. This time all rules are gone. There is no more rules. No so more. I saw the purge. trailer for yeah, that. It's just yeah. Purge, purge, purge. So yeah, uh, <laughs> the Purgers don't want to stop purging. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was like, okay, cool. So yeah, yeah. I need to. Uh, I'm, I need to catch up. I'm, I'm behind on the Purge movies. I can't remember the last and one the I TV saw. Shows. So, so I, I oh the wow. TV shows. Yeah. yeah, I felt like the world kind of started to blend, and I was That's, like, what's going on? That it's became like wild. a whole franchise. A yeah. whole, whole franchise. Yeah, there's like a prequel to how it started, and it was supposed to be like a scientific experiment. And interesting. Then there's like there was a last one, you know, with the lady president getting elected mm -hmm. and. She was supposed to end the purge uh, forever, and I guess that didn't happen. So, <laughs> wow, yeah. So it it's like a monster franchise now. You Pretty know, so. wild, man. Yeah. Well, people must like it, right? Hey, see, we, it's, we it's about cheaply it? made, yeah, and so it always makes some money. Back is it one Blumhouse or I, I believe so? Okay, yeah. they're always good. But about it's always, that you know, stuff. yeah, it's always like ten million, twenty million, and it usually makes that money back on the weekend. And afterwards, it's it's all profit, I would imagine. So nice, yeah. nice. Uh, Tony B says. Uh, I'm good just here in Arlington, home of the Cowgirls. That's Double A's team right there. Whatever. Sure. So I agree with you on that. Yeah, I didn't know <laughs> how far apart fucking Arlington and Dallas were together. Hey, huh. so where was your con? It was in Dallas. It was actually in Dallas. And you stayed in Dallas this time. Yeah, yeah but even then, it was like some big-ass mall that they have up there. And, uh, man, but this place was super tiny. Okay. Uh, I think my second floor is bigger than oh, that wow. spot that they gave it. You know? So uh, it was very tight. Uh, I couldn't look 
around really really it was just super super tight it was packed it was packed yeah uh, okay. but i mean it's small it, yeah. it's really small I, mean, I guess good packed for them because they, they get you know well the the, the big name they had which was kind of a late edition was chuck norris oh wow he was like as soon as they announced him uh they it said all their up. vip sold out and everything oh well yeah I mean, yeah he, was, he's getting up there so oh, yeah, it's yeah, kind of like yeah. make your move on chuck norris he was you got charging a hundred uh so i was like you know what i i like to do but i'm not I'm not gonna spend a hundred bucks yeah. for an autograph. I don't have a Delta Force poster, so I, don't I, I would need that to get signed. I was just like, "Do you have a picture of you and Bruce Lee?" I, that's <laughs> now, what I'd be asking. Who did he replace? Because he was a last minute replacement for who? Oh well, see, that's the thing though. It was like a big name. He, he was just replacing the the actor who played Shang Tsung in the original. Oh, Mortal Kombat. okay. So I mean, I was like, well, that was like an I guess, yeah, him. that's what I'm saying. I was kind of like, like I like the dude. I like the actor. Uh, yeah. You know he's come out in a lot of movies, but yeah, yeah I was like, uh, okay, so I guess uh, this was really based around uh, Shang Tsung. Interesting. Uh, you know? <laughs> so, Interesting. Yeah, on but, that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, that's, that's cool. when it says Chuck Norris lives here in Dallas. Okay, so yeah, that well, must have been an easy, yeah, man, easy like two hours for him. So, sure, the promoter probably had to come up with some cash and say, uh, "Hey, man, we're right here in your hometown." The you pictures know? I've seen, he did have a good line. So yeah, <laughs> so that's why I think, like you know, when people when they do something in Austin, it's like it should be easy to get Undertaker, right? Because he's there. You know what I mean? Like you, you would know. think so. Well, I mean, shit. No, we never landed at Shawn Michaels. Yeah, anywhere. we never get Shawn <laughs> too much, and supposedly we he's never here. landed in yeah, Austin you know. anywhere. You know, yeah, well, <laughs> he's a He's the I was gonna say he's the California rattlesnake now, but, yeah, but he, even when he, he was here yeah. in Texas, I, I mean, think he bought a ranch in Nevada also recently. Yeah. He sold his Texas he's ranch. Out, yeah, he's, he's out of Texas. He's like fuck Texas weather. You're <laughs> the only one that left Stone Cold and went back that way. All those Californians are coming here now. <laughs> He'll be back. He'll he be probably back. likes the weather. He probably got tired of this fucking uh, weather. I think he's way. a beach guy too. You're by the beach. I mean, like, oh yeah, this fucking, weather is fucking brutal brutally here, hot here. Man. Um our picture looks grainy to me, but I think maybe because we don't have all of our we're lights on, on yet. Yeah, we're on VHS. We're doing a video style right now. <laughs> so, but uh, no, we'll turn the lights on in a second here. We just haven't gotten them on they yet. Did. Uh, Anthony says, "I know they did Texas Walker, or Walker Texas Ranger here in Dallas. Oh, right that on. too. That's right. Shit. Yeah. Right. I wonder, are they doing the new Walker Texas Ranger there? Have you, you know, caught any of that? No, I haven't. But I know WB likes to shoot a lot, or WB CW, CW. likes to shoot a lot in Canada." Supernatural mm -hmm. was filmed in Canada. Smallville was filmed in Canada. Yeah. You know, so I feel like the real hubs for filming right now are Canada and yeah, Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. because there's like a lot of. I think the fees are the a lot fees. less. Right. Yeah. Right. You yeah. Know what I mean, you got to get um, a lot of clearances to shut certain shit Apparently down. You you know do. I mean? yeah. So I don't know how they do it in New York. That's, I would yeah. be pissed off if I lived in New York. Tarantino yeah. talked about how he, he shut down uh, oh, Hollywood Boulevard man. for once upon a time, or whatever. And then, you know, you shut it down, but then you got to recreate. Well, you know. you know, I did read something about that. Did he mention in the podcast about how some of them actually kept the designs? They, uh, they, no, they talk I about any of that? No, I didn't. Yeah, know I heard that. some of the restaurants loved the old look and mm -hmm. they kept them. They how cool they could is keep that? Them, so, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And what, how fucking long does that take? What are they doing? Putting up like facades in the front of like that Taco Bell? Uh huh. You know, that was, I was like, oh, that looks cool. That's yeah, pretty that cool. Really cool. I need to, I need to, you remember when that. they light up everything know. like towards the end? Like yeah. everything kind of lights up? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty sweet, man. That's pretty sweet. Uh, Tony B also says Dan Canadians are taking over. Hey man, like I said, these Hollywood types are trying to save a buck, so they go over there and film oh, yeah, there. They are. Yeah. So that's why you, you don't know. see them going to London. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, no. I mean, like you said, I mean, can you imagine when they have to shut down New York? Like that must be like they lose all that tourist money. Like so, for Tarantino to do Hollywood Boulevard, I mean, like that's the main drag, guys. So it's like, you know, fuck. I mean, it's just like all those businesses are just like, well, we're out for these. <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> uh, they gotta get something though. I would imagine oh, I'm sure. they get some. You know, oh, we gotta charge you this because you yeah, know, we gotta give some to the restaurant. You guys know that I, I listen. To, um, I listen to the Fat Man Beyond podcast, Kevin Smith podcast, sometimes. And uh, this is a while back, before Once Upon a Time came out, during one of his episodes, because the bar that he films at is called the uh, Scum and Villainy Cantina, <laughs> and it's designed inside to look like the Cantina in Star Wars. Yeah. So um, he, uh, yeah, we gotta probably adjust the lighting here. You probably, we probably need the ring light, but. Um, he was saying in one of the episodes that he was like, yeah, I, I couldn't get to my, uh, I had a difficult time getting in. He goes, why? Because Tarantino's down the street shooting once upon a time and he's got the street all shut down. And he says, uh, there, that looks way better. 
he tells uh he's telling his partner mark bernard and he's like man i should walk down there and just uh you know walk into his filming or whatever since he's he's Have ever causing all this cross paths uh, anywhere like any because i mean well, you they're know, both indie directors you know his yeah. daughter is in once upon a time oh, harley quinn harley quinn smith yeah his i didn't daughter. know that mm-hmm. yeah. she's in there yeah i think they're i don't know if they're real friendly or whatever he has like that It'd be utmost... interesting though because i mean yeah. they both kind of have similar backgrounds they mm-hmm. both have that big indie movie mm-hmm. you know clerks and the reservoir you know they're out of the same class i would say for sure him and robert and and uh uh kevin so yeah uh I mean, I think they definitely know each other, and they—they, they, I know uh, Kevin's definitely talked about them before, or whatever. Like, they're—I think they're definitely friendly, whatever. Okay. You know what I mean, but right. I don't know, like, real friendly. You know what I mean? But, but uh, I think that just that definite love is there for. Because it's funny because you know, we all see like Tarantino is this like super cool dude, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm pretty sure he's just a nerd, just like Kevin Smith is. Oh just yeah, Kevin Smith shows it more. Yeah, you know, from everything we read, he's a movie guy. He does like comics, the mm-hmm. the surfer thing that you told me, mm-hmm. Crimson Tide. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, True, true, true romance. I mean, mm-hmm. that whole scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was telling Double A that when I listened to the Joe Rogan episode, like, of course, Quentin in Quentin fashion rattles off this list of movies that I've never even heard of. And I'm like, I consider myself fairly well versed in movies. I mean, here we are in a pop culture podcast. I mean, it's like, but yeah, but you're talking about movies that like, yeah, I, I favorites. I yeah. never, and in fact, one of the movies he talks about, Double A, he mentions that he goes, If there was a movie that he goes, because he told me, he said, he told me, I wish <laughs> he told uh, Joe Rogan that in one of the interviews he was in, that someone made a reference to something being Tarantino esque. And he said, what does that mean? Like, tell me what that means. And he goes, well, there's certain hallmarks of your movies. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, in other movies. So yeah. he said, okay. So he goes, I'm going to use that phrase. He goes, but if there was a movie that he would say was Tarantino-esque out of the 80s, um, and see, I can't remember the name. Uh, uh, but anyway, when I, I'll get it. I'll get damn. it. Cliffhanger. I, yeah, Cliffhanger. <laughs> when I get the name. But he goes, in this movie, he goes, the guy – uh, works in the video store. The guy reads comics. He makes references to the Silver Surfer. He goes, so that movie is kind Damn. of Tarantino esque. And I was like, hell? what fucking movie is this out of the eighties? I never heard of this. Damn. But he does a really interesting uh, uh, comparison between Bill Murray and Chevy Chase. And he says oh, that wow. yeah, he goes, like each other. he says <laughs> all the Bill Murray movies. He goes end kind of on a happy note where he says like like at the end bill murray like learns a lesson mm-hmm. or whatever he goes, he goes that was what was big in the 80s he goes but in the chevy chase movie it's not like that you know what i mean so he goes aside from the vacation ones but he goes uh you know there was like i guess just i don't i don't know that many other chevy chase movies besides the vacation like fletch is the one everyone always talks about yeah. Have you seen that one no see so i'm not familiar with it no. but i know three amigos that one's great you know what i mean um definitely lesson learned that that's not really his i well, it is. I guess him well, see, and Mark uh, A lot of Bill Murray's movies, though, are directed and written by Harold Ramis. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, Egon. You know? Egon. So uh, as soon as that relationship ended, that's when you really don't hear about Bill Murray too much. Right. So, right. Yeah. But at the same time, too, though, it's kind of like, you know. For some you, reason, they had a falling out. Yeah. But he hit that good lick of movies in that time. That's what I'm saying. Like, and they're yeah, Harold good. Ramis movies. Yeah. You know? so. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> go hear it. If you guys, you know, you'll get a chance. Go listen to the uh, Quentin Tarantino on Joe Rogan, and then hear him on Mark Mar- Mark Maron. That's what I did, and they were both check uh, him out really on uh, the episode we did on him. Yeah, I'd like to get yeah, hear our episode about Tarantino, uh, which we called the uh, the Righteous Man. Yeah, uh, I'd like to get Tarantino on this podcast. Oh, I wonder sure. if he would. Uh, wonder if he's, he's even. He mentions his agency on there, so I wrote their name down. So I'll be reaching out to them, and they'll be like, "Who the fuck are you?" Yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah. So who? What are, what are the comments we got in here? Double uh, Let in the house. Hi, Let. She says hi, handsome guys. Hi, hi, beautiful Let and Joe. Oh, man, Joe, the podcast superstar. Man, now watch this. And now watch this. Uh, I thought you were going to be busy tonight, Joe. I thought yeah. you had some games going on. They double recorded episodes, so they're they've got one in the ah, in the can for the future. Okay, uh, okay. But great episode this week, Joe. Um, all about they they went deep on two episodes of Fresh Prince. One of them, I'm pretty sure you can guess which one it was. Uh, uh, so when her dad comes back yeah, and he leaves, yeah. And, yeah, which you know, <laughs> I hadn't rewatched yeah. it in a long time. So 
when these two oh, guys, shit. when so, Lu- when Lucky and Joe uh-oh. got into their episode, uh-oh. they were. T- I said, "Let me go to HBO Max uh-oh. and watch the episode real quick." So I watched the first one they talked about, and I, which is about the one where Will and Carlton get pulled over. Uh, which I was like, "Wow, this is a pretty fucking strong episode, or whatever." And then I was like, "Okay, I know that episode pretty well—the one where his dad <laughs> comes back." I was like, "Oh yeah, this is not this is not good crying. here." It was He's just just a total sob fest. I was like, man. <laughs> "I messaged them both, and I was like, hey, you know what, Lucky and Joe, fuck you guys, man, <laughs> fuck y'all for making me cry at work like a little bitch." Uh, it's Will Smith, great acting though, man. Uh, man, um, James Avery, Uncle Phil, just superb actor, Shredder, yeah. yeah. You guys want to hear a great, great uh, podcast in addition to our own? Go check out Now Watch This with Lucky and Joe, their recent episode uh, covering two episodes of the classic, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Uh, <laughs> they had a poll on their group on who the ultimate dad was, a landslide. They thought it was going to be close, is what they said, between uh, Cliff Huxtable and uh, James Avery uh, as uh, Uncle Phil. The thing is going to be uh... – a heart swallow. It's dead. He's dead. <laughs> yeah. See, now everyone assumes that Cliff Huxtable behind is, closed doors yeah. was also was raping. He was like <laughs> yeah. getting his rape on. So uh what up, Joe? Oh, uh Joe says he's live from Allen, Texas Hotel. Hey, right right, right, hey, we got right. we got Joe in Allen, Texas. We've got Tony yeah, B in we're, Arlington. Yeah, we we're spread all, all over Texas. all over the great state. Oh, and as Anthony says here, um, I was looking on Google yes- yesterday and they have uh a Hell's Gate here in Arlington supposed Hell's to be Gate. haunted. Interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, tell us more, man. I'm interested. You're, you're big into the, the haunted stuff, uh, Tony V. You want us to get into some of the, the more horror, uh, macabre stuff. I uh, definitely want to do some of that come um, October. We get ready, probably September. We're going to just widen up spooky season from September yeah, all the way yeah, through October. Shit. My birthday is in September, and I like Halloween shit. And the we Halloween stores Halloween. are open by yeah. then now, right, Dole? So fuck it. open in August. Yeah, Watch. you know what I mean? <laughs> I got, we're going to convince this guy. We're going to do some costumes between that time. We'll just come dressed up. Uh, he's got his They Live mask down in his garage. <laughs> so ah, we get to wear that one on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joe says, bro, Cosby didn't serve drinks. Well, well Cosby's out. So <laughs> done, that's it. Oh, he's, he's out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, he, man. Um, who put up a good cartoon? And it's uh, it's Cosby on the couch with Lady Justice with the, with the blindfold. Yeah. And she's like, I'm so sleepy. And he's uh, there with the drinks. Like, damn. you know, like, fuck, man. Damn. Hey, you know what I say? I don't know. But the Ugh. memes are good. Oh, you know what's funny, Joe? Look it up. Look this up, Joe, since you're out there. I saw, oddly enough, your episode, right? It's Uncle Phil versus... Uh, Cliff Huxtable, right? Well, you know, Felicia Rashad, who played the wife, yes. Uh, yes. came out in his defense, right? Cosby got released. She comes out saying all these things, right? Well, they said one of the main people that came out in opposition of her, of what she said, right away, was the original Aunt Viv from The Fresh Prince. Oh, okay. So, Joe, post that in your group as an interesting companion article to uh, your competition that you guys had. Uh, but I didn't get to read it, but I thought that was like, whoa, what the fuck? She was like, uh-uh, not on Aunt Viv's watch. So... <laughs> But uh, guys, we're fastly approaching our first 30 minute mark. We want to get into what we're talking to uh, you. Uh, we want uh, to get into with you what we're quick, talking about. Uh, right? Joe says, I can't wait for Halloween time as well. And then Roxanne says, Summerween movies again. Oh, uh, there's something really cool happening here in San Antonio, July 24th. I'm hoping John and Roxanne do make it. I'm hoping me and my wife make it. Uh, they're having like a uh, summer at Santa Carlo, summer, summer of Santa Carlo. It's pretty much like a theme, like somewhere in East Houston at the Vibes e- event, where it's celebration of all things Lost Boys. Oh, that's so badass. they're having a contest too of like you know best looking vampires or okay. characters from the movie. It sounds like a really fun night. It's all ages, uh, seven to midnight because the contest is going to be at midnight. Uh, I want to go. I want. I really want to go. I will. I would like to dress up, but I'm afraid it's gonna be really fucking hot. Oh yeah, it, it's uh, definitely gonna be hot. Yeah, you got to be the summer vampire, double A. How would the well, summer? They're all dressed. Dress? They're all dressed in the fucking jackets and and <laughs> like Kiefer has the 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 trench thing. Yeah, going. like yeah. I was like, man, even like Michael has like a jacket and mm-hmm. Corey has his like thing too. I like, gotta do my take on that. I gotta. I'm, do, like, I'm, gonna, do, I'm gonna do my man, take. We're gonna on be that. we're gonna be burning. We're gonna be like like frost from Blade. Well, we're, only, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're only out at night, so I'm only coming out. Yeah, at but night. but the sun here doesn't go down till like about eight thirty. Yeah. So. It's not a lot of not a lot of vampire time here in, in South Texas. It's like oh shit, you know what I mean? Like when is the fucking so, sun going down? It sounds down? really cool, guys. It's July. 
July 24th, uh, East Houston at the Vibes. Mm. Uh, man, it's all things Lost Boys. It sounds like a really, I'm down. Really fun. There's a whole bunch of vendors, uh, yeah. everything, music, vendors, uh, everything. It sounds like it's going to be a fun time. And if Roxanne's going, I can't wait to see what she looks like and John looks like. So If we're going to make that adventure, guys, y'all let me know. Yeah, I'm really I'll... hoping. Well, my wife already said, yeah, she wants to do it. So Very cool. I'm really hoping this works um, out. So. Right now in Fortnite, a lot of the main characters, they put out a whole bunch of summer outfits and they look pretty neat. I'm like, oh, wow. It's kind of like, you know, it reminds me very much of, remember when uh, Fleer did the X-Men cards where they were at yes. the beach? Yes. You the know what I mean? So yeah. it was very cool, yeah. you know. Where Wolverine has the, the hot dog on his plate. Yeah, and he's wearing like trunks <laughs> and, you know. Uh, they're all uh, muscular. The window oh, are yeah. all busty. Yeah, they're all in thing. bikinis and stuff. You know, it's a pretty cool series of cards. Uh, <laughs> it was like an addition to that card yeah. set, but yeah. uh, pretty cool. Uh, Joe says, go as the sax player. Definitely, he didn't have no top on. I'm on yeah, it, man. It's go. gotta be like yeah. bah, 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 bah. that's my dance moves right yeah, there. Just for get that long those wig. You can't see it. Everyone to know who you are. Uh, <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, check the check. Oh, let me see. Oh, yeah, we're probably out of time already. Yeah, <clears throat> we just did. We just did. So yeah, I just okay, got, so just uh, yeah. Roxanne wants to do summer wing movies. I think we should uh, do at least one, maybe. Uh, Uncle Phil hands down best TV dad. Anthony Ferreira says, "I still think it's Tim the Toolman." Good one, Tony uh, B. Joe says, OG on Viv. <laughs> uh, Roxanne says, yes, Santa Carla. She goes, I want to dress up like a vampire. I hope you do, Roxanne. I can't wait to see if you do. Uh, and make time for yourself. Don't waste all your time on John. Yeah. John would appreciate yeah. it. And be a summer <laughs> vampire, though. You and John, I know you're listening, so... I'm talking to you, Val. <laughs> there you go, right there from the man himself, double A himself. But, and, but Rox, I want to see this. What does a summer vampire dress like? Uh, yeah, I want to know what a Texas vampire dress like. Yeah, because we've seen California. It For looks sure. like it's pretty cool over there. So. See, that's our take it's on it. It's not there, cool right over there. here. It's does a vampire not... wear shorts and flip flops? <laughs> I mean, if the sun's not on me, you know what I mean. Remember in Blade, he says because they they're covered up mainly, but he says yeah. he's, he says that uh, he's got that sunblock on his yeah. face, frost. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm whatever. saying. That he starts like kind of burning. And yeah, it's like your mascara's running. <laughs> and that's another question, right? Double if, if the light's not directly on me, do I still burn? Yeah, up? See, I, you know I, I thought mean? that was funny that Blake kind of tried introducing the, the sunblock. Yeah, I was like, come yeah, on now. Great. I like too that he used the UV, he had the UV lamp yes, instead. Yes, yeah, so, Roxanne says Lost Boys is a summer weed movie, and Anthony says it will be a cowboy vampire. That's what I'm saying. Uh, hey, uh, how about that? A western, vampire. I like it. I like it. I feel like it's been done, but but uh, somewhere, but uh, oh wow, I'm down uh, to do it Roxanne again. Says summer vamp is basically Daisy Duke with fangs. Oh, well, there you go. I hope to see the, some of those over at the uh, wow, What kind Santa of vampire Carla. camp are you going to, Roxanne? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Good uh, stuff. Any Good vamp stuff. will be burning up with that one. Shit. Again, if they're in the sun, but they got these are night these are night dwellers. Yeah, they and, keep uh, them out. yeah, and I bet the the fucking uh, vampires hate living in Texas. Right? Remember, Man, remember when nine thirty. Remember in Queen of the Dam when when uh, Lestat and Morius are walking on the beach. They're still in fucking. You see, in California, it's cool at night by the beach, but not not here. At night, it's not cool. So, so in Houston, I guess the real question is, what does a Houston night vampire look like? It's got to be, I'm thinking like a, a grill, you know, like Paul Wall, you yeah, know what I mean? Man, <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. Sipping a vampire lean, <laughs> va vampire lean out of a plastic cup. But it, guys, so, man, it really sounds fun. Like it does. Said, I'm really like hopeful. Like my wife said, yeah. Okay. So I'm really hoping that we go through it because I want to go. I love the Lost Boys, uh, and if it's really like a tribute to the Lost Boys, that's just fucking awesome. It's like people are already just finally doing this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. Where Lost Boys is kind of like a joke for like a long time mm -hmm. until like it started getting rediscovered. Yeah, you totally. Know? We're now it's you know like as a classic movie, so. I mean, man, that'd be awesome to see. And it, it, it's a really good part of East Houston, too. Oh, okay. I like that part of East Houston. Nice. So. Nice. Um, wait, here in town? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I, why did I think that we're talking about Houston, the city of Houston? I, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, is there a difference between Houston and San Antonio? I'm so lost, y'all. <laughs> like, so when it comes so to lost. vampires? It's the non-drinking. <laughs> you know, Steve hasn't even joined us because we're not drinking. He's like, <laughs> fuck this show now, man. <laughs> Joe says low rider vamp. Car. Okay, there you go. And then uh, Anthony says a ghetto vampire from Houston. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so correction, guys. This uh, event will be on East Houston Street yeah. here in San Antonio. Yeah. Why I'm thinking the city of I Houston? Don't I don't know. I had some pizza earlier. 
probably maybe that was it. I'm yeah. thinking about the four hour cut of Star Wars that was going on <laughs> of the Revenge of the Sith. So there's that. But uh, great comments, guys. I hope that you all that are here continue to hang out with us for the rest of the night. Uh, we don't think it's going to be a super long one okay. this night, um, but um, we'll get right into it if you guys are ready. But hang out with us. Uh, yeah, guys, it's it's Fourth of July weekend. So again, we're trying yeah. to do something Fourth of July ish. Yeah, you know, in, in our way. In our own unique way. In our way. own unique way, yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and it's um, kind of a sequel to last it year's is kind July of a sequel. episode. We're doing a sequel with the prequel. Yep. So there's that. Yeah. And in addition, what else? Uh, next week, it's going to be a quick turnaround, guys. Next yeah, week, quick, our show quick. will be on Wednesday. We're going to yeah. be doing a Wednesday night. It should be just another Wednesday night. Next Wednesday, just another Friday night early edition. And we'll put up posts like I did last time about Hey, show's coming early this week, so you'll get to see and check Any that out. On this? Uh, oh, no, not yet. Oh, no, not yet. Okay. No, right. no, not yet. Um, when I get something, I'll let you okay. know for sure. Alrighty. But uh, all right, guys, uh, stay with us. Hang out uh, and enjoy the show. Uh, come, let us know what you think. Comment on it. I don't know that many of you will know about this topic, but maybe you have questions, or or maybe you do know about maybe it. Just or like the just character. Other, other interesting thoughts. guess who it's about. Yeah. Or if not, just tell us your 4th of July plans, and we'll read those in our next 30-minute break. Uh, what do you think? Double A sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, then let's get uh, right on to it. Uh, as soon as I can get the audio set up here, which you guys know I also have always have difficulties knowing what I'm doing. So. I don't know. All right. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Uh, you probably heard the commercial without me leading us in. I apologize for not getting us into the break in time because we were just yammering on about what whatever we were yammering on about. And then you missed the whole me getting the street East Houston and San Antonio confused with the actual yeah, city of Houston real bad. because yeah. I am an idiot. But <laughs> uh, we're glad that you're back here with us. And we're going to get right into talking to you about what our episode is all about tonight uh double a you want to set us up a little bit yeah so last year we did uh kind of like our own very unique uh july 4th episode mm -hmm. so it was uh about born about the punisher frank castle captain frank castle and his last tour of vietnam well cm told me not too long ago hey did you know that there's like a prequel to this and garth Ennis is a writer too i was like no he's like yeah he wrote about his first tour of duty of vietnam I was like, wow, okay, well, let's do it. So I read it. I liked it. I was like, you know what? How about we do a sequel to last year's episode uh, with Frank Castle from his last tour, and we go back this time to his first tour. Yeah. As second lieutenant Frank second Castle. Second lieutenant Frank Castle. So we're calling this one, guys. Welcome back, Welcome Frank. back, Frank. You're in our yeah, life so again. so we're bringing him back to us here. Uh, yeah, I'm wearing my, my – uh, Netflix version of the of the ah, skull so cool. there. Yeah, uh, so cool. yeah, you know what? Um, they actually have shirts at Hot Topic Double A with I think it this doesn't look too far off from that. This one, picture, actually. yeah. Um, but this is the book, guys. We're talking about. Uh, it is called again the platoon. The platoon. Yeah. Uh, all about um, Frank Castle and his first tour of Vietnam. He gets his first, you know, command over there. And again, it's written by CM's favorite comic book writer, maybe writer, who knows? Maybe, uh, yeah. Garth Ennis. Garth Ennis. Art by uh, Goran Parlov. Great art inside. It was it looks familiar. Like I've seen it before, but I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't point. place him either. But uh, yeah, and it's. Uh, I believe the inker is. Uh, excuse me. Let me get this here. Uh, artist is Goran Parlov, and the colorist is Jordi Belair. Their names okay. are both on okay. the uh, on the front there. And I'm showing uh, the camera uh, a picture for those of us just listening to on audio the inside cover there. Um, but guys, you know we love the Punisher. Yes. And to me, Garth Ennis in the Punisher uh, is like when you get uh, Scorsese with De Niro or DiCaprio. It's like. These things go together. Like when Ryan Reynolds is playing Deadpool, it's Heath like Ledger, so perfect. Joker, yeah. Robert Downey, Iron Man. Yeah. For whatever reason, and there's a great quote on here uh, from IGN, which says, uh, Ennis understands better than anyone the tragedy fueling Frank Castle. And man, guys, for me, a Punisher written by Garth Ennis is the definitive Punisher. It's funny because it's like almost like if you didn't know the history of the Punisher, you'd think Garth Ennis created the Punisher. Right. And because it right. seems like he loves this character. And I wish I could have asked him that, honestly. I was like, is Punisher like your favorite character? Because yeah. it seems like you love him more than any of your creations and anybody else because you just. 
he gets into the mind of Frank so much. Uh, yeah, these like this one and Born really have nothing to do with Punisher, him being Punisher whatsoever. It's like what leads him. Well, kind of like Punisher was there, mm -hmm. but the war brought it brought brought it out of it, right. brought it out of it. Right. You know, so and you also get an understanding of the man. You know, Frank Castle. You know what I mean? Uh, and he, it's almost like you go deep into these stories, and you're like. You kind of forget the Punisher is supposed to be like this old comic character, mm -hmm. you know, from like the seventies. You know, you kind of forget that. You feel like this is like a new character that's yeah. been created. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of like a sad story because like you read so much of a history of of this one and more, and you kind of feel bad. Like you're like, wow, this. You feel bad because this guy ends up becoming a murdering machine, a killing machine, a of a bad people. Sure, if you want to say that, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they're, they're bad. He, he no, doesn't they're kill bad. innocents. He doesn't kill cops. He doesn't, but still, the, the kill list is up there where oh, it's yeah. already beyond probably <laughs> anything. Well, you know, I mean, you know, you're, you're not supposed to kill, right? I mean, that's the thing. You're uh, God's law, apparently, you know, thou shalt not kill, mm -hmm. you know, and he's uh, a guy that's just killing people left and right, left and right. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I think what it is about the Punisher in Frank Castle is that when he is the Punisher. But and when Garth Ennis is writing, especially. Yeah. W would you say that Garth Ennis has done for the Punisher what Claremont did for Wolverine? Yeah, big time. I mean, like that's big just time. an easy, yeah. no no questions yeah, about it. Punisher was always a like somewhat of a joke. Like he would have popular eras, mm -hmm. but then it was like kind of like he became like a joke kind of character. It was like yeah. this guy that whirled around with the skull, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, what Garth Ennis did, and I really would recommend if anybody wants to start a collection, I really would recommend the Garth Ennis run on Punisher. To see uh, this one, different. Yeah, I mean, man, brilliant I stuff. The writing's there. great. Uh, you get into the mind. It feels like really right team. It feels like it's totally different from the Marvel Universe Punisher, right? This oh, yeah. feels like a different kind of Punisher that he's writing. Like, it's, yeah. like he almost exists, like you know what it would be a real world. And Spider-Man and them don't exist almost. It's yeah. crazy. Like a lot of military terms are used. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's tactics. sometimes sometimes hard to follow because it's so like, I mean, you know, you get through it. It's fine. But I mean, like. Tactics uh, are used. Uh, I mean, he's like out thinking everybody. He's always like two, three steps ahead of everybody. He is like a master strategist. Yes. You know what I mean? This and is a guy that's on a vendetta uh, just wiping out everyone that's wronging another person, you know, and. It's weird. I, I don't know if you could. It's that's why I'm saying it's really hard to do this kind of character mm -hmm. without like it, it feels weird to not bring the sympathy in, but I don't know. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just the kill list. It's insane. Yeah. So you know? <laughs> like I love the Netflix version uh played by John Bernthal. That's my second favorite though. Second to this one. And as as men go, they're still very different. Yeah. Now the the viciousness and the violent the violence of Frank Castle in the Netflix show. Is accurate to Ennis's version, and and what a uh, strategist and an intelligent guy Frank Castle is is there with the military background. Now, obviously, in the Netflix show, they have to. I think they make him more of a Gulf War veteran because it's got to be brought it up. up. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, but but in the Marvel comic book version, the version written by Garth Ennis, 1968, he's at Kason, just outside of Kason. I mean, like, you know, number one, the setting is there, guys. We're talking about fucking shit, like, from the movie Platoon and, yeah. like, Apocalypse Now. Like, yeah. you're real fucking, you know, Garth Ennis puts you in that place. Now, the thing about it is when you get to him actually being the Punisher written by by Frank, uh, by Garth Ennis, uh, Frank Castle pretty much is gone. There's just the Punisher. The Punisher. And, yeah. and now that guy and the way that you see the Punisher being in the show, they are very different because this one in the comic book, by Ennis is is without any remorse, without any friends, without any nothing, help, nothing. with nothing. He is a lone wolf on a mission, on a vendetta. You know, and it's just one go. You just kill the bad guys. That's it. Right. That's it. Evil men, dead men from the Boondock Saints. But yep. uh, double A. This is kind of what I think about way the way, and I love this. What Ennis says with him is that Frank considers himself a man that is damned already. Yeah. So to him. If the worst yeah. that can happen is hell, I'm going to take as many of you to hell with, with me, me before I yeah. go. He, he, you know, even a guy like Wolverine who does kill, I think has an issue with killing. He, he doesn't does. want to kill. He doesn't want to kill. He wants to be left alone. But he will kill. He will kill. Right. Whereas yes. Spider-Man, you know, uh, Daredevil, they don't kill. That's not their thing. They're, no. they're going to avoid killing even if it may cost them, which see, there's, there's certain guys that have a lot. it costs people 
around them to die. Right. Yes. Right. And there's other. See, he sucks for a guy like Wolverine. <laughs> he tries to. Uh, he doesn't want anyone around him to die. They die anyway, and he still kills. So he's fucked on both ends. But Frank is like, well, I will. Have, I will have no ties. You know what I mean? It's, and it's like once his family's dead, that's it. Yeah. Uh, he has no one left. You can't tempt him by killing this person. No. Yeah. He's gonna blow your fucking brains out. Yep. And that's it. So <laughs> let's talk about. This story, guys, the platoon. Okay, so let's get right into yeah, it. Yeah, at the end of Born, you, you pretty much he he makes some sort of deal. It seems like supernatural, maybe that bring he's the punisher. Yeah. By by that point, he's done. He, he's already done by that whole book. Mm -hmm. You know, he he already has that look. He's he's just fucking crazy. You know, this one he's fresh face. He's just in, enlisting to Marines. Yeah. I don't know if he went to soldier school or something. Uh, he or went to uh, officer training officer school, Officer they training. Say. Yeah. Okay, and he's second lieutenant Frank Castle. But at the start, it's like some author is interviewing some of his very first men he commanded. And uh, apparently he's already written like two books about the Punisher. Yeah. Right. What's cool is that he mentioned it goes, you, well, you got, they, it's four men, older gentlemen, obviously. That daughter, served with Frank. And they yeah. say, well, we kind of recognize your name. And then he goes, you might have read my book called Valley Forge, Valley Forge, Valley which Forge. is neat because that's the name of the, uh, in the born, I think that's the name of it the, uh, the last is. story. Yes. Uh, which is about, you know. And, and yeah, and they were like, yeah, I read it. And uh, it's pretty brutal. He's like the, the story that you wrote about it. You right, know? right. <laughs> and even one of the gentlemen there, uh, which is a uh, Sergeant uh, Dryden, He's he gets up. It's kind of your classic. Oh, yeah. I mean, w when you read Garth in his period, it reads like you're watching a movie. It really does. And this one feels like it. That's what I'm saying. It really feels like what you're watching here isn't like the Punisher at all. It's mm -hmm. almost like another character. Almost. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't really explain it. It's weird. Uh, but it's like it, you can't imagine this guy interacting with like Spider Man or Daredevil no. or any of them. No. It just doesn't seem like that in this book. Yeah. You know, it just sounds like a Vietnam vet snapped you know maybe during the tours maybe after his family died you know mm -hmm. somewhere and then he just went off on this vicious vendetta killing mobsters killing bad guys killing anyone uh, slave traders right oh yeah uh russian mafia uh italian mafia you know uh, just human on, traffickers human yeah i mean just going on this one man think, killing think of anybody in the real world guys that's on the news that's a fucking piece of dog shit that you wish maybe somebody would strike down uh frank has to do it because he's like you hurt someone else's family just the way somebody hurt my family mm -hmm. and you're now you're not going to do it again you're yeah. not going to get that chance again you know yeah he's judge jury and executioner no doubt and it's and he doesn't uh, care yeah and the sentence is always pretty much the same which is fucking death there's no yeah. playing around so um but, but but yeah so but again back yeah, it so up to this, the very beginning so somehow this guy is able to get four of his very first like guys some of his guys, it's four of the living crew a platoon that he led right and he pretty much wants to know early frank castle he right. wants to know the first tour of duty the first kill mm -hmm. how was he how did he react to situations right sam it was like yeah kind of before like in born he's gone Right. He's already gone. Here, yeah. he wants to know how he got to that point. Yeah. In Bourne. You know? uh, this Sergeant Dryden, like I said, he gets up to leave the table. Kind of your, like you see in the movie, right? The guy that's like, I'm uh -huh. not going to have this talk, whatever, because, you know, we're not going to let you badmouth this guy. You're some writer, you know, trying to sensationalize the, the Punisher or whatever. You know what I mean? And he's like, no, I'm trying to just understand, you know, before. You know what I mean? So, so again, you know, they start. He sits back down. The other three guys convince him that they're drinking beer and whiskey. Yeah, and stuff. it was like the first time these guys are all together, right? Right. Yeah, yeah the so, old war buddies. Yeah. from Vietnam, and and they start to talk about the first time they met their new commander, second lieutenant, second lieutenant Frank Castle. Frank Castle. Yeah, so kind of fresh out of uh, OCS school, uh, which is like officer training school. You know, they're all Marines. You know, and um, yeah, so they're like, you know, they kind of talk about how they were like, well, you know, here's another classic second lieutenant. Um, what I love, Double A, is that we just did, and sadly, did you just hear this? The Twilight Zone is leaving. It left Netflix today, yes, I did. yesterday. <laughs> I did read that, yeah. So we got it yeah. just in time. Just we did in our time. episode. Yeah. But one of the episodes that we did, uh, which was about a lieutenant that got yes. a new command, and yeah. he pretty much is your classic dick, right? And he's and like, I guess this must have been a common theme. 
you know, uh, yeah. just, you know, they showed in Platoon. Oliver Stone writes about it in Platoon, mm-hmm. you know, with that that guy that Barnes is pretty much manipulating, you know. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, this is the guy that, like I said, even in the episode of Twilight Zone, I can't remember the name of the episode right yeah, he's now. he's a young guy. Yeah, but he's like, oh, that's how you wear a uniform? That's how you talk to an officer, blah, blah. Well, I think that these guys, they've already been out there in, in the Platoon comic we're talking about. And it's six issues, guys. Um, they're, they're thinking, like, oh, here comes a new guy. He's going to be that yeah. way. It's the same, you know, the, the the guys who have been there already know it's a shitty war. But this new guy's going to come in with a plan. going to put them all in danger because this lieutenant wants to show off to his superiors. Bolster himself. You but know they know there's some things right away, you know, about the dude. Right, you know? right. So. Number one, they leave him with the sergeant, and uh, he pretty much says, okay, you know, kind of like, show me what's going on. Like, you know. Yeah, he wants to get all the info. He knows the sergeant has all the info, the real right. info that he needs, the right. real intel. You know, so, yeah. And he gives him, like, this initial trust, you know what I mean, where he's like, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I don't know what I'm, what uh, you know, what's going on out here, what yeah. situation is. I can only assess from what I see and what I've been told. Um, and uh, so they're like, they say that. The guys are telling the story to the writer. Uh, and so they're kind of like, their narration is going on throughout mm-hmm. the book, yeah. and they're saying he was willing to learn. He was willing to listen. They're I think like, they even you know, said he even hides his bars. Yeah. They said because, when he got there, he yeah. didn't have any of his rank on, which he knew. You know what I mean? Don't wear which, your rank out yeah, there. Because I mean, you see him like forced up. You know, he gets mad when they salute him. He's like, whoa, 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 don't salute me. You yeah, know? fucking snipers will yeah. shoot your ass. You know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, you know, he's the complete opposite of what you think this second lieutenant would be taking over a new platoon. Being, you this know, this guy's not trying to push out platoons to try to impress people. He's trying to. Do what they have to do, but keep everybody alive. Okay? That yeah, and that becomes his mission. Then yep. keep everyone alive. Keep my men alive. At, this is my platoon, and we're gonna survive. You're gonna yeah. get through this. We're gonna do what we need to do, but we're not gonna do anything where we're just gonna show ourselves and say, "Hey, you know," right. and right. get a new first platoon after everyone's died. You know. <laughs> yeah. So right away, um, you know, he says, uh, "Oh, we got to go clear some some uh, village, right?" Yes. And yes. the sergeant is like, "Ah, shit!" And yeah, and because like, he keep telling everyone it's all clear, right? This, it's abandoned. You know, it's abandoned. There's no one there. But the sergeant's like, mm, "There's snipers in there, you know." And he's like, yeah. "That's a good place for them to." As soon as we come out, you know, yeah. it's like you know we'll be dead, mm-hmm. you know. And what does he do? He he says, "Well, what do you think?" And then he's like, "Well, you know." Uh, I think we should avoid it. You know, we shouldn't go. And, you know, Frank listens to him, you know what I mean? And he says, instead, I'll call in the airstrike, bomb out the village or whatever. And they're like, they're shocked. They're like, what? Like, you yeah, know, because like, like a new lieutenant calling in an airstrike. That's right. Like, Whoa. Right. You know? And especially on a place that's supposed to be abandoned. Yeah. So, and he lies. He says, I saw what, a flash of uh, of light. I think it might have been like, yeah. you know, off of like the, a, a sniper scope. So that's enough for them to do the airstrike. They do end up finding bodies. Yeah, there's a few bodies in there. I think where, he says yeah. four. Yeah, that they found. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when he goes to call it in, uh, they tell him, they go, well, we normally double it. So that way they know that it wasn't like a wasted airstrike. Yeah. So now, again, the guy that Frank is at this time, he says there is a total of four bodies. They go, we normally we would say eight, you know, and then he goes, well, just tell him it was two then so that they can mark it as four or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. So he's still trying to kind of be honest. You know what I mean? He wants an accurate representation of what's going on. Um, so right away, the men have a, a respect for him. They're like, okay, he he didn't want to take us into a potentially fucking hostile environment or whatever that was unnecessary. You know, what Very I mean? unnecessary. Very, very. So then uh, kind of what happens next, Double A? That's well, kind of then- the, the end of first issue more or less. Yeah, and then they show that that uh, I don't know what you would call her. What would you call her? Because she's not part of the army. Yeah, so th- th- that's a good, great point. There, they do because she was like around that area, right? When it got bombed. Yeah, right. And she's not in uniform. She's just in like black pants, no shoes, and like a black sweater. But she, she's trained. Yeah, she's like Highly a mercenary. Almost, yes, you know what I mean. But yeah. on the the uh, Vietnamese side, and. Uh, She's obviously respected too by the Vietnamese. Very she, highly respected. She, yeah, she's. I guess she's just like an assassin. Yeah, that colonel like really wants her mm-hmm. to be with them and to help him out with the, you know, with controlling that area. Yeah, that's a senior colonel. I think it's 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 G I A P. I think it's G I. Yeah. yeah, and so it's funny too. Like in that first issue, you know, they're 
the author tells like some details that they never knew about and they're like right. how did you know that like right. how do you know that and they're like well i interviewed the man mm -hmm. like he still lives over there <laughs> you know and he looks like a you know a retired you know uh happy old man you know just living the life yeah you know <laughs> and he tells them uh the the author that's taking the notes from the the, the members of the platoon he tells them he's like yeah he, he loves america yeah. he loves americans yeah. and and he says he understood you know he is also an intelligent guy yes, that is. understood and the this is war and this is a situation that we're in and uh you know and they even say something like it wasn't it's not like the vietnam war over there it's like the american war right like, that's what they call it yeah. you know over there it's the american war yeah. <laughs> you know? so it's interesting that they these guys from frank source platoon were getting this alternate perspective of their main enemy especially in this engagement that they were in so that senior colonel Giop from vietnam is talking with this assassin chick and she, she just, just wants, wants to kill she just wants to kill as many americans and he's telling her you're an asset to us because mm -hmm. you have great skills and i i would rather have you in a sense train 10 guys yes to, to do and like know her. what you do yeah. yeah but she's like no nah, i just want to go kill you yeah know what she's, I, mean? so, I don't have time for this no right no so um yeah, I think that kind of ends issue one. I think. Yeah, like issue Jumbo two. Yeah, they it. start. He starts kind of like uh, Frank wants to know more. Uh, the weapons they use fucking suck. You know, I'm not yeah. too sure that's in issue two. It is. Yeah, they're okay. using like the M16 rifle, and all the guys are like, "I'm jammed." They they end up getting in a conflict. In bad, a, in a, fire a real fight, bad conflict. And it's yeah. uh, it's um, raining. Yes. And in the mud. Yeah, and uh, I think and I, they're just bad weapons being produced, and so he mm -hmm. goes to the what do you call those guys? Uh, the sergeants that have all the stock. I guess like the uh, the armory, like the armory yeah, sergeant or whatever, and pretty much in charge of all the inventory. Yeah. And you know, again, if you've seen like movies like Glory, you know mm -hmm. that fucking dude uh, held out like on the shoes, right? For Matthew Broderick's resume, you know the guys. There's even the episode in Mash. Where they're trying to get like an incubator and they have to go through a lot of red tape through this guy who has like three of them. Oh my god. You gosh. know, so I guess it was something too. I guess that's like a real thing too. Yeah. Pretty much like he makes a deal. He's like, you know, the, the rifles that the, the Vietnamese have are like highly sought after uh rifles. Yeah, and because like, they're cheaply made and they don't ever jam, but they're the, Frank says he tells him he's like, This weapon isn't very accurate and it doesn't have good range. You know what I mean? So but he's like, Well, we're killing these guys if they want them you know we'll trade them for better. the gun they trained on yeah. the better gun which was the m14 yes. which looks like it has kind of like a wood stock yes. you know what I mean? like, yes uh, and he's like i want that i want those i want ammunition uh i'll give you as many of these weapons as you need mm -hmm. the sergeant loves those uh, you know it's like okay I can, let me make a few calls because he's a shady fucker that guy yeah. the artillery guy and he's also the guy that dropped frank off at the beginning at the at the with his platoon and the sergeant lets him know he's like this guy's up to shit. you know what i mean yeah so he's like okay they make a deal and then frank makes one last request because he asked him he's like is there anything else and he's like yeah there's i hear there's a whole bunch of heroin going around he's like keep it away from my platoon right you know and and the way he like i guess the way he's supposed to like say it or that look really scares the shit out of that sergeant and yeah. he's like oh, okay they you write know? him like stuttering like yeah. you know like well, okay no, yeah. no problem but frank pretty much tells me he's like i need the guns I need the I ammo. Need passes I need passes. I need a flight. I need a flight. Yeah. To get over there. And there's that really funny part, right, where one of the the platoon guys goes, "Did you guys realize we're taking a plane back? We're going back to yeah. where they're supposed to be yeah. at, or whatever." <laughs> but these are the links that uh, Frank's trying to go through to make sure his men come back. Right, and they have, you know, they're properly supplied at least with the right weapon because when your fucking gun is jamming and that's all you got, I mean, like they're fucked out there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Um, that's a really cool. So that was kind of cool, part. right? That it showed like Frank is still willing to do something like, I guess negotiating something that he probably shouldn't have to, mm -hmm. but just wanting the best for at least the guys that are under his command. You right. Know, just, I want to make sure they live. I don't want to make sure we have the best possible weapons. Yeah. It's a, it's a, do that with. it's a stark contrast to, the Punisher, who we know who will stop at nothing to oh, yeah. get the kill. Yeah, but here you have Frank is stopping to at nothing lives. to save the lives of his men. That's he's he knows his duty as their commander is to keep them alive. So, so it that's seems like that was really do. strong in him in all these early Vietnam uh issues is that he just wants to make sure everyone goes home, yeah, under him. Now it always shows does he want to go home, 
That's the thing. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, right. that's the thing about, you know, what Garth Ennis is kind of pushing in this one at Born is kind of like, well, it seems like Frank's meant for this. Mm-hmm. Like he was suited for this. Like he knows what to do in these kind of situations. They, they, there uh, is no pressure for Frank. Yeah. You know? There's really great um, passages in the book uh, that say the men are talking to the writer. They're giving him the, they're like, look, you want to know about what his first kill was? They go, the truth is we were in a firefight. He goes, and everybody gets like tunnel vision. Like you're focused on yourself and yeah. what you're doing. They're yeah. like, so we couldn't tell you. They're like, you'd have to go to him to know that. They're like, but he probably doesn't even know who the first yeah, they, and one he, he shot and was. And he really you know? wants to know. Like, he's really adamant about, like, knowing about who the first kill for Frank Castle was. And it's like, it was probably just some Vietnamese soldier. Some random, that yeah. That didn't mean anything, you know? And there's a great scene, too, in that issue, too. I forget. It's kind of before that where he got, kind of does, like, a Rambo scene where he grabs that big ass. Oh, <laughs> and right. And he blows that guy. Blessing so, everyone. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that part is really cool because that's when they're in the midst of that firefight yeah. before the guns. And they're like, oh shit, the uh, like the big artillery gun is like it's unmanned. And they're like, we got to get to it before they get to it because if they get on it, they're gonna just mow us down. <laughs> yeah. So he runs out there with the fucking pistol. He's just shooting them with the pistol, and he fucking pretty much like hops over the sandbags. The two guys are already in there. He fucking shoots one, blows it, blows one away. He gets on the gun, and right then the other guys are there, the Vietnamese person, and he just like starts, oh, he mows one guy's head like completely like, off. Yeah, like, and then they just show like all the other ones. I was like. Damn, I was like, right yeah. out Rambo, like the fourth Rambo movie. I was like, there's some cool shit. shit in there. He goes, he, you know, one of the guys is telling the writer, he's like, yeah, we're, we're, they, they, they're on us so quick. You know, uh, Lieutenant Castle is like, okay, a fixed bayonets. And he's like, that's something you never think you'll hear. <laughs> he's like, but there we are. Like, yeah. it, they're, they, they kind of talk a lot about, you know, like the, the, what war is like. And they're like, it's such a crazy ass world. Like you're in such crazy ass situations that you can't find it believable. He talks to the one guy that, that helps him, the gunner. He's the gunner. And he goes, there's another guy. He never messed up with the feeding the belt of bullets. He goes, and the whole time he would just be fucking smiling and laughing. And he goes, not because he was sick and liked to kill and that. He goes, because he is the only way he could cope was to be like, kind of like, this is some crazy shit we're doing. Like you're kind of laughing. It reminds me a lot of like, um, what Jamie Foxx tells Jake Gyllenhaal in Jarhead, you know, is he goes, you know, man, I could be at home having a comfy job in an office, blah, blah. And Jake Gyllenhaal asks him, he goes, well, why do you do this then? He goes, look around you. He goes, where else are you going to see this? And all the fields of oil are on fire there in Iraq. And that's when he's like, I fucking love my job or whatever. And I'm like, you know, and that's what the kind of the point is, is that some guys are just suited to it. They talk about it. They yeah, say, and, and, you know, I think that's what I like, too, because it seems like, you know, like we've talked about before, it seems like Garth Ennis kind of has problems with some of these like real comic book heroes for some reason. I don't I don't know. It's weird, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but with Punisher, it's kind of like, look, this man, you know, because he's very big on military, British, American, very big, mm-hmm. like. You know, like Peter Parker should. It's like for him, Peter Parker should not be telling Frank Castle anything. If this was like a real life thing, right? <laughs> he should not right. be giving him moral standpoints. You know, after what this man has done for his country. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like this guy fought for your country. He brought back people alive to their wives. You know, he did a real job. And here's this clown yeah. in this fucking suit that's hiding his face, brightly colored telling, suit telling this man who's actually done stuff or done real hero shit he's telling him what he's doing is wrong yeah this guy shouldn't be telling him anything yeah <clears throat> i also think that maybe a lot of the way that garth writes uh the punisher has to deal with the fact that maybe he sees that um a lot of us kind of fans tend to like idolize and i think that's what it is and too, we yeah. should idolize our veterans and yes. our guys that and I think that's where he's always trying to point the comic book fans. Mm-hmm. If you notice Garth Ennis's later stuff, it's kind of more like more based on real stuff, you know? Yeah. Cause he wrote Constantine, he wrote Judge Dredd, he mm-hmm. wrote, he, he did his fair share of comics. Oh yeah. But then he started getting into more into the, the more real character yeah. uh, creations, you know? And yeah, like Punisher, he, he's like a hundred percent Garth Ennis with Frank Castle, you know? Yeah. And uh, man, it's just the, uh, like I said, the way he's writing, he's just like, this is what, you know, this guy's supposed to do. He's saving lives. It's it's like CM said. I didn't even think about it. It's such a uh, sharp contrast to what he later becomes, where everything yeah. has to die in his, in his vision, or right. here he's just trying to save lives. It's it, it's funny. I, I didn't even think about that. It's yeah. a real good twist. It kind of reminds you of the whole the whole Anakin Skywalker thing. <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, speaking of my four hour, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, guys, we're quickly approaching our next 30 minute break. I uh, see so you got some comments in the uh, in the queue there, so we'll go ahead and take care of those. Um, I guys, I hope you're really digging this because it was a really good story, really especially cool if you're story. a Punisher fan. It, it's cool to kind of go because, again, this is like a different, you know, this is Frank Castle. This is how you see Frank Castle morph into the Punisher. Yeah. I know? mean, like, look at the show Gotham, right? It's about oh, Bruce Wayne. It's not about Bruce Wayne, but I mean, it's a whole story without any Batman in it. It's just the young Bruce Wayne yeah. and what kind Gordon, of about Gordon, you know? you know what I mean? I think in that time or whatever, but that's kind of, um, you know, you can get a show like that out of a character kind of like, well, that's what Smallville did with, with what, what, Superman, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Like, and I mean, I, I kind of wish, I hope Marvel does kind of do a show maybe on the Punisher, but on the Vietnam stuff. I, I think that the shows on, you know, uh, Platoon and Born would, man, would be definitely great. It's right up their alley. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. And of course, we have the story of the first tour and we started yeah. the last tour yeah. so it leaves yeah. the obvious window open for the That'd second awesome. tour that we don't that's know something about that they really never talked about you know mm -hmm. that, it's a really interesting aspect of this man it makes you like it really does make you sympathize like man this poor guy who sacrificed a lot to make sure other people got home safe to their families when he got back home yeah his family was taken away and he became this you know this vicious i guess what you would say vigilante you yeah know, it, it makes you like man, like golly, you know, yeah. This guy, you feel bad for his guy. And there's uh, there's some really interesting opinions that come from the four gentlemen that yes. are being interviewed yeah. regarding that and what they yeah. think or whatever, you know. So, but we're gonna get more into uh, the Punisher, the platoon, uh, in just a. See, I don't know if I should put the break here, but <laughs> I, you know, I can put it here or before now that I know I missed it the first time, so I may just put it maybe here the break. But uh, either way. We'll be right back in a second. And if you're joining us live, you know that we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to stay here, hang out with you, uh, read your comments, answer your questions, and just generally uh, see what you have to add to the conversation, guys. We'll be right back. All right. So I know I got two spots now where I can put the break. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let's check out uh, who's here, who's in the queue, double A. Let's uh, read some Anthony comments. says, I'm fixing to go check out the Flo Hernandez comedy show tomorrow. Oh, okay. All oh, right okay. on. Cool. And he also adds, The Punisher is my favorite character. Badass, man. man. Great awesome. choice. Great choice. Uh, you Joe love says, this thing. <laughs> Joe, Joe goes, Frank would be waiting for Cosby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Don't come to New York, Cosby. <laughs> uh, Joe asked a pretty interesting question. He goes, when you read or hear any Punisher, who do you picture when you're reading the character? Oh, that's an interesting uh, thought, uh, Joe. Uh, for me, this one stands alone. Because I started reading Garth Ennis's Punisher but before. But you hear like John Bertha when you're no, reading? No, no, because okay. that Punisher wasn't out yet. Okay. So I just, and it wasn't like I put Ray Stevenson in there or. Definitely not Dolph. Definitely not Dolph. <laughs> uh, no one. It wasn't like not no Thomas one from Jane. the movies. Nope. Nope. Because I was reading all the Garth Ennis stuff before all that came okay. out. Okay. And it's just like in my mind, I just. Because I know uh, that one's supposed to be based on a. a a Garth one, right? The Thomas Jane one, kind of, sort yes, of. kind of, sort of, you know. What but I mean? it was supposed to try and be in that vein, yeah, because right? they incorporated some of the characters, but but it wasn't, you know, no, there's yeah. no uh particular voice in my mind, it's just like a gravelly voice. If anything, I almost hear, I won't even say like a clean Eastwood because I hear maybe a Charles Bronson, maybe right? like that, like that kind of voice, like a gravelly voice. And they always describe him, they don't really say, I'm sure it's on one of the cards, but like. He's a big guy, like tall yeah, and yes, like a big is. fucking yeah. guy. Yeah. And and they kind of they kind of show that here. This one a yeah. lot. Oh his, yeah. His they, size. He's, he's fucking bigger than a lot of the other guys. And they don't really say like his age in the other ones, but you address that there is age to well, him. Yeah. You know what I mean? The character is supposed to age uh regularly. They're you know, he's supposed to be uh like in his fifties, sixties. Yeah. And, and and you know, the what would you say now? You know, mm -hmm. like it, especially during the Civil War, he was supposed to be already be up there, but fit fit beyond like you know anybody else, like a really solid. What well, you, shit you seen? J.K. Simmons, uh, yeah, a picture of him oh, just yeah. being fucking ripped, you know? Diesel man, big <clears throat> time that guy. But uh, I mean, just a square jawed, blue eyed guy from Flatbush, New York, but super smart. You know Maybe, I mean? and this is the thing that Garth is kind of brings out sometimes maybe even a little psychotic 
Right. You know, he's always kind of mentioning that. It, was it the war, you know, was it the mafia killing his family or was it the war? Yeah. You know, what what brought out the Punisher? It's I almost like, it's almost Castle. like you're 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 doing this on which way you're gonna go, and one thing tips the scale. It's kind of like way. did he love what he was doing in Vietnam? And that mafia killing just kind of he used that as an excuse. I've heard I've read Garth Ennis kind of mention that before, yeah. or you know, was he fine? Was he sane? Yeah. And the mafia killing him, pushed him over. I mean, who knows? You watched the Hurt Locker, right? The yes. one? Yeah. Uh, you know, one of my very, very favorite parts is at the end, and I love that movie. Man, I like loved that movie so much the first time I saw it. Um, and I, you know, I own it. Uh, and I revisit it, although it's heavy, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, when Jeremy Renner's talking to his baby at the end, you know what I mean? And he's like, you know, you love your Jack in the Box and you love your bear and you love you love everything you see. He goes, well, sometimes, you know, you only love one thing, you know what I mean? And like, you know, he'd already had that talk with the wife about possibly going back. He needed bomb text. <laughs> and then like right after that scene, it's like day one comes across the bottom and you see him coming off the plane and you're like, man, like, yeah, I get chills thinking about it because I'm like, fuck, man. Like, that guy was a fucking badass, man. I mean, like, he's a fucking badass. And he's not a good family man or a good dad because he's going to go and potentially get blown the fuck up. But he's going to he's gonna do it to save lives, but he's also hooked on the and, adrenaline. And, and the, I think they kind of show that, too, a little bit in First Blood, uh, mm. where he's like, you know, over there I was in charge of, Ten million dollar equipment, and over here they I can't even hold down a damn simple job over here. Right. You know, it's right. He was good. Rambo was good at what he did. Yeah, in the war. Yeah, you know, operating machinery, killing missions. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the way Frank saw himself here. He was like, you know what? I'm really good at this. I'm really good at scouting. I can really tell when there's people trying to kill us. But you it, know, it's definitely I, two sided I'm though because good. there is that also. I do like it. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, you knew in the I hurt like locker. Having people under my command, yeah. I like saving people. Well, I, I think even the killing, though. Yeah, I mean, like, because yeah. I think because he addresses that in this too. That yes. I, I want to bring it up when we get back on, but um, but he yeah, kind of even in Breaker Moran. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and 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 like I said in uh in the hurt locker, that too is like it's like yes, it was about saving lives, but he also got off. One of my favorite parts in Breaking Bad, you seen Breaking Bad, right? Yes, yeah, my favorite parts is like the whole time it's like Walter saving the money for the the family, right? But eventually, uh, Skylar is her name, right? Skylar? Yes. She eventually tells him, she goes, don't give me that bullshit about the yeah. family. And then he goes, that's what he says, right? He's like, oh, man, I saw those, my two friends that went off and I was a fucking teacher making teacher money. Yeah, I wanted to be the man. Well, and I was. He says it at the very end. He finally just comes out. Yes, it did start off as family, but I was really good at this. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved making the shit. I was good. I was. He says it. He says it flat out towards the end. He's like, "Yeah, I did it for me." Yeah. After a while, <laughs> which I like that because I was like, "Man, they put that in," which is like sometimes a lot of the times that's it. Like sometimes I feel like that's missing from Batman. I'm like, "Why don't you say that? You kind of are psychotic too. Yes. You like hurting motherfuckers. Yes. You are angry and bitter and full yes. of vengeful rage. <laughs> yes, you know what is. I mean? I'm yeah. like, I'm like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you're dressed up as a fucking bat hopping on a roost." I mean, it's like, you know, that's why I've always felt like I'm like, okay, Batman doesn't kill. I get that. But I'm like, that doesn't mean that, why, why can't he take an arm off or a hand off? I'm like, that's not murder. I mean, it's like, you know, no, it's not. and people might be like, no, oh, but apparently Batman can't even eat pussy. So it's like, I guess oh, they're not going to yeah. let him take a hand yeah, off or whatever. Right. But right. I'm like, what the fuck? That should be like, you know, this is why to me, Batman is in the category with, with this, with, with Frank in Marvel and guys like Daredevil, guys that their power they either don't have power or just like regular guys because i'm like against someone super powered to me batman you're you're out of your league you know what i mean yeah you know even for you to fight spider-man is you a know mismatch. what he he may be able to get maybe the better of punisher but punisher is going to make sure he's not going to be the same batman yeah. after that fight's over with there's a classic you know? story guys called confederacy of dunces <laughs> where the punisher takes on wolverine spider-man and daredevil at the same time and it's written by garth ennis and he does it in such a way that you're like yeah that's that that <laughs> would work you know what i mean like you know and it i have a feeling that the uh, garth has his own commentary on dc characters you know what i mean yes <laughs> Which he does kind of seen a little in bit the in boys. the boys yeah you know but um 
you know, we also have that interesting story that's out right now that we're going to get a taste yes. of him actually doing. Yes. That guy we're talking about, he's doing a, a, a Batman. Well, run yeah. Right what, now, what's so. so good. At, and again, like no one had really ever touched that subject. Was the Punisher always psychotic? Right. Was he? Was right. that budding there already? And like you said, he found out he was really good at this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no one telling him what to do, really. Mm -hmm. In this place, he can do whatever the fuck you want. You can go to sleep whenever you want. You can stay up whenever you want. You can shoot people whenever you want. I mean, it's... They talk about the rules a little bit. He, yeah. says, he says, Lieutenant Castle talked about how when there was a time to bend the rules, which is kind of what he did with the guns, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so, of course, which is weird. Which I've always thought was weird is that there are rules of war. <laughs> right, you know? right, exactly. <laughs> when you're out there trying which, to... Which, again, I would highly recommend from Garth Ennis, from CM, uh, Breaker Morant. That's mm -hmm. a really good movie based on all that kind of Great stuff. Great movie. And I give all the credit to Garth on that because I only watched the movie because yeah, he mentioned that, it. Yeah, but that touches like so much creature. of what we talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that's where he gets it from. Maybe that's yeah. where he gets his writing from, the... The rules of war. Uh, when is it uh, a, a you know a kill compared to a uh, what a murder? Uh, a murder. Yeah. yeah sure. You know. Sure. No. Yeah. I mean, definitely, man. I mean, like that movie is uh, very and, intriguing. And it's cool because too, and that one too, and maybe that's where he got it too. Like they show like the guy, the like the commander, where he was a very cultured man, mm -hmm. right? Remember, right. He, oh, yeah. he has friends over there having a party, he's yeah. playing music, and then you know they show him doing these vicious things in war you yeah. know where well, you're just like wow could that actually could that be the same guy you know yeah so. the samuel L. jackson movie rules of engagement ah, uh oh, yeah. it's i feel is almost like a direct not ripoff but like a direct you know american version of breaker moran almost about that. um but also too what about tom hanks and saving private ryan here you have the teacher the school teacher the the pacifist the man that educates that yeah. you know but yet over there he was a badass leader yeah he was fucking awesome at world war ii you know tom hanks is there and they were all trying to guess what he did before right you know what i mean it was like nobody would have guessed school teacher but over there you know what i mean like lives are in your fucking uh, hands joe real quick he says i think he got pushed over the edge with the murder of his family <clears throat> so that's what joe thinks but if you joe have you ever read these two uh books <laughs> you, might, you might have a different opinion. Uh, yeah, I, I highly suggest uh, these to anyone, especially uh, especially Tony B. You said you're a Punisher fan, man. You yeah. definitely get a kick out yeah. of it. Uh, let's see. What, what other comments we got in there? Uh, uh, he said that Joe says they might restart the show, which we've heard rumblings about. Right, that would be great. Uh, he says, I think Berkman is coming back. Bergman? Uh, oh, I think he means uh, John Bernthal. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. John Bernthal. Okay. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, Joe says he likes Thomas Jane. Uh he goes, Joe says, it's hard a lot of them coming back to real life as when they go into the service. You right. Know? Uh, he goes, we kind of talked about that in a Renaissance Man episode. That's nice right. plug-in, Joe. Yeah, nice, plug -in. nice. Very good. Uh, Bat is a vigilante. Bat <laughs> eats all the cats. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, they, I mean, they need to put that in. I think so, definitely. Uh, yeah, man. Why do you got to yeah. keep this guy like yeah. he's fucking special? I know. And he likes to eat just like we do. Wasn't it a few... <laughs> you know? a few it was like a year or two years ago that it was a big issue that there was like a, a panel yeah. with his dick out or whatever. I'm like, if you're putting Batman's dick in comics already, then just let the guy eat pussy. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, I would like to know who's writing this shit though, because I'm like, hey, I, I want to know. I have at least something in common with Batman, right? That I'm, could be something. Yeah, I ain't gonna got his money, that's for sure, and I ain't gonna have it. So there's definitely that. But um, all right, guys, well, let's get back into the uh, into the rest of uh, Punisher the Platoon right now. Guys, thanks so much if you're hanging out. We missed some interesting conversation during the yeah. uh, during the break there, uh, including with our man Joe from yeah. Now Watch This. That's right, that's right. Including how uh, Batman is not allowed to eat pussy. Apparently, <laughs> I guess it wouldn't have been a pop culture podcast if we didn't at least bring it up. So come on, man. but uh, we think we here at just another Friday night. We know and think that Batman does. They're in fact. putting Harley and Ivy together. What do you think they do? Yeah, come on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on now. I mean, you Is can't Batman be... supposed to just be a priest, right? Right. Oh, what yeah. Batman fucking wears his underwear while he fucking has sex or what? I mean, come on. <laughs> I tell you who doesn't do that. Frank oh, fucking man. Castle, yeah. the Punisher. Oh man, <laughs> uh, dude, the Punisher, the platoon guys. Outstanding story, and we talked a little bit yeah. during during our break about. Uh, do you want the book? No, 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 uh, no about no. Um, the movie The Hurt Locker. You know what I mean, and how the primary character played by Jeremy Renner. You know, uh, he does have a family at home and a wife and kid waiting at home, but he is hooked on the the very beginning of the movie. There's a great quote, and it says, "War is a drug." Like they're 
I don't know that feeling. I I've never been there, but the way I've read about it, described and seen it in like a film like that, it's like these guys get hooked on that. I don't know if it's like the not necessarily the killing, but like the adrenaline of well, war. You know, it's, it's the, like I said, uh, the lawlessness uh, of war. Oliver Stone, you know, he was uh, a Vietnam uh, soldier, mm-hmm. and he did write a lot about what kind of what his experiences was in Platoon, the movie Platoon. So, you know, he writes a character that Tom Berger plays called Sergeant Barnes, where Sergeant Barnes is kind of like a Frank Castle almost, it, except he's like kind of like he doesn't give a shit about his man. But yeah, he's a fucking he, asshole. <laughs> but you can tell Barnes going back to civilization mm-hmm. is not going to be whatever he came in. You, you, you know, Barnes is already lost in what he does yeah. in Vietnam. That's you know? almost like these guys had that inside of them. But when you go and you they send you over there and they tell you to become that yeah. and that the lion's out of the cage, you don't put that lion yeah. back in the cage. You come yeah, back, so you can't come back over here. That's kind of what I'm seeing, like with P- Platoon, because Oliver Stone said he kind of lived that, you know. So I was like, wow. So you know, for you know Frank Castle, you know maybe Garth Ennis got some inspiration from that. Mm-hmm. Oh sure. Uh, you know whatever other war stories he probably heard for real. Mm-hmm. I think his dad or his, Derek Robertson's dad, right, and born. Right. Yeah. His yeah. That was a Vietnam uh, yeah. a veteran stuff like that. So. So yeah. So um, man, it's just it's yeah. Frank Castle, uh, you know, he he's doing what he's doing. At least here in the in the platoon, his first tour, he's doing what he needs to do. He's getting the supplies that he needs for him and his men. In order to just make it through so they can go home, uh, I think even then they say they have like a few days or weeks, right, uh, mm-hmm. each of them before they finally leave and they don't want to really push the button, right? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So they um, – What I'm trying to think what it happens It intensifies next, so. like more and more. Uh, you know, they have a moment where they're kind of like on R&R. Yeah, that's right. You know? That's what I was thinking. That's and, what I was getting to. Yeah, they get some break <clears> time. And uh, he kind of sergeant kind of has a one on one, right? Right, with, with Frank. Yeah, he does. Sergeant Dryden, uh, is African American, the only one that seems like he's in the platoon. This uh, is the first and, time ever I've seen the Punisher Frank kind of just be loose. Yeah, you know, just not worrying, not looking over his shoulder, nothing. Just he looks calm. He's, you know, having a drink. Yep, drinking a beer, and uh, all the other guys are going to get laid. With the hookers. They're with the hookers, yeah. And uh, uh, Sergeant Dryden comes to sit with them, and he's like, you're not with the other men. And he's like, he even tells Frank, he's like, why aren't you at the officer's club? And he's like, nah, I want to stay away from, you know, certain stuff. He's just drinking a beer by himself. And and then he he asks him, too, he's like, you're not going to get with any of the women. And he's like, no, and he shows him a picture of his wife and kid at home. Which he also says, too, he has another on the way. Another on the way. Yeah, yeah, he says that. Yeah, and he they just have this picture. really great, just like kind of like one on one, right? Just mm-hmm. kind of like you know, kind of asking him. And Sergeant Dryden shows a picture of his woman, yeah, and uh, yeah, man, it's it's interesting. They call him, you know, they call him LT, you know, for lieutenant yeah. or whatever. But um, <laughs> yeah, man, it's uh, it it's really interesting. He asked him where he's from, uh, and uh, Sergeant Dryden is from Bed Stuy, New York, and, and Frank is from Flatbush, New York. I didn't know where that was. I had to look that up, but I think it's in like the, the Brooklyn it is. area. It's in one of them, yeah. So that's interesting. They're both like New York guys, and they're, they're checking out the women or whatever, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they're not clean. <laughs> like yeah. a lot of them come back with like uh, maybe some diseases, some venereal oh, yeah. diseases. And he kind of, Frank kind of tells them later <clears throat> that he goes, uh, a kill is a kill to the enemy, whether they kill you with the rifle or yeah. they kill you with the disease. You yeah. know what I mean? So you're like, fuck, you know? Yeah, and then afterwards, they're all kind of just having to drink his platoon, and these fucking Marines just come in, and <laughs> they're pretty hot. Right. Yeah. With oh them. yeah, 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 and uh, they're but, about to start brawling, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I wanted to back up real quick. Okay. To the, the talk that Sergeant Dryden has with Frank is is pretty much he says, "Don't get stuck here. Yeah. Don't get convinced to be coming back again and again another he time." Kind of sees tour. a little bit that Frank is really kind of starting to enjoy his time in Vietnam. He's very <laughs> attuned to it, and I mean, so like, imagine anything that you do. Imagine you never. Uh, carved a piece of wood, but then someone gave you a piece of wood in your hand and you were able just to like make a boat out of it. Or imagine you never sat at a piano and then you sat and you could play really good. We all know what it feels like to be really good at something. So, you know, you 
kind of naturally gravitate towards that, you know, but, but Sergeant uh, Dryden's trying to be a good guy to Frank and say like, Hey man, don't, don't get caught over here because kind of like, you know, the longer you're there, the more chance you ain't going to come back is. And he talks about how the other guys are almost done. Like they're on there. They're getting ready to go on their way out. They only have, you know, how the guys in the Vietnam movies talk, you know, I'm only a couple of wake ups yep. away from getting out or whatever. <laughs> it's a big uh, part in, in born as well. Um, but, uh, you know, he tells them that, and then they go in to check on the men, and they're get, about to get uh, – some of the platoon are about to get into a brawl with some of these Green Berets. The Green Berets come over, and they're talking like, fuck the Marines and all that, and like, y'all pussies left us and this and that. And so they're right about to get into it. <clears throat> well, Frank walks in, and he just pretty much – you know, and they draw him as big as this main Green Beret who's a fucking – they draw him yeah. big too, like a big guy. And he just tells him, control your men, officer, or whatever. And then right then he looks at Frank, and then he's like, like he wants to go at it, and the the men are telling the writer, you know, the relaying this. They're like, we thought it was gonna go down right there, and uh, the next panel is just the guy backs down. You know what I mean? He's like, all right, let's get out of here. Think of it this way: it's kind of like trying to stare down Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. and it's just not gonna work. <laughs> he probably saw the the look that Frank was piercing through him, and he was, like, oh yeah, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I don't need this tonight. Okay, I'll. You know, we'll back off. Yeah, he went in there with a head full of steam, but once he got, I once you know Frank put those eyes on him. It's neat how they draw him right in the shadow. Yes, you don't see Frank's face. He's yeah. he's he's covered in shadow. So, uh, very interesting. Um, but right after that, they go back. Um, they have to go back to back to I guess camp or wherever. Yeah, they at, do. Back yeah. into the back yeah. into the shit. And um, I'm trying to think what happens right after that. Um, yeah, just, they you know, they go the, back. Yeah, I mean, and the look of it too of this book, you can almost, you can feel the humidity, you can feel, oh, yeah. you know, the jungles, you can feel the sweat, you can feel how miserable this place is. That's what Garth really does, and the artists too, mm -hmm. uh, really do a good job of, you know, just everything about it. It looks ugly, it looks bad, it looks like you don't want to be there for more than one day. You know, it, it looks like you're trying to just live <laughs> to that ultimate end goal. You know, of just Getting going out back of home. there. Yeah. You yeah. Know. And, and if you've ever seen any of these Vietnam War movies, I mean, like they easily help transport you into the book because you can kind of hear the sounds. The sounds. Or, you know, bugs. you've seen yeah. Forrest Gump. You've or seen like you said, if you lived in now. Texas, you know oh, what yeah. the humidity is like. You know, yeah. and think about that in the jungle with all the equipment you're carrying. Oh, on yeah. Here. God, if you've ever camped, you know what I mean, near water and you hear the shit was, and there's mosquitoes. I was cutting my grass that. today and I just <laughs> drenched like already in the first five minutes. I was just all wet. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. that's just ugly. Your hair is dripping. You can feel that, you know, your sweat's coming down your face. You know, it's just every ugly thing that you can imagine. Yeah. You know, there's even that, that scene like in, uh, I'm kind of getting off again, but Platoon, where Charlie Sheen's character sits down and a whole bunch of ants just get on and oh, start yeah. biting Fuck, him. And it's man. like, oh, because you can kind of feel that, you know, when you, when you live down here, you can kind of feel what's going on. And, and they really do a good job, like, again. The art, the artists that Garth Ennis always gets, they they always make you feel like he you has know a, what it, you know yeah. what the surrounding feels like, yeah. <laughs> you know, or can imagine what it what it feels like, you know. He's got great taste in, in artists, and uh, his longtime collaborator, uh, you know, Steve Dillon or whatever, tragically uh, killed himself. Uh, was suicide, right? Double A, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. I, don't I believe know it was. Suicide. I think oh, it wow. was. Holy crap. Was, you know what? I thought he you just know what? Passed away. I don't want to be quoted on that. So, yeah, because uh, we just love, passed away suddenly. We, we both are huge fans of Steve Dillon, or whatever. So uh, let me strike that from the record, or whatever. But he did pass away. Uh, so Steve but Dillon, you can but... tell more and more as the story's going. Frank Castle is really starting to enjoy. It. He's liking the soldier. He's it's getting to him. He wants to go in some more. You know, I mean, it's just it's all there. Yeah, and it's not like they draw him as some like wide eyed like no. maniac. Like no. he wants to kill. It's not that. It's, it's that... weird. He's they always draw him being super focused yeah and it's more like and it's more like again it's not the killing it's not like a bloodlust it's like he's good at keeping these men alive right now that's strategy, his goal you know? right his goal is like i am going to keep my men alive you know what i mean like that's and he's my like in game for him he feels like there's so many bad commanders that are just pushing platoons and they're dying and they're dying and he feels like he's good at really saving these men by born in, they're like he's got a reputation for keeping men alive, right? By that fourth tour or whatever it is in born, yeah, he has a reputation that okay, Frank Castle might be off, Captain Frank Castle, but 
he'll you'll be safe you're with safe him. with him you're yeah. safe with yeah, him. yeah totally and it feels like that's what he likes he's like yeah you know again like, he, he brought it up to your, my attention he's saving lives here and he likes it he enjoys doing that and you know by the time you know it's like almost when he gets back to america and his family struck down it's kind of like he's like almost like a betrayal right of, yeah like he almost feels like america betrayed him and that's when he kind of either snaps right there or he already had snaps. So Yeah. I mean the way you get it in, in Born is almost that he knew he was gonna have to have But he said he wasn't gonna remember though. Remember right. he does right. tell him you're don't worry, you're not gonna remember this. So just enjoy your time and hold your family tight. Yeah. And they show him on that last scene where he's just like hugging his wife super tight. And right. It's like, oh. And it makes you think, you know what I mean? Like, you know, in this book, the platoon, Frank's purpose is to keep his men alive. He makes that his solitary yeah. goal. So that means this gives you a glimpse into what kind of man he is. No matter what, I am going to make sure you get out of here alive. And see, that's the kind of guy that in here, that, that's probably what Captain America would have loved. Because he said, you know, mm -hmm. Captain America doesn't like obviously what the punisher is right but he probably would have loved frank castle oh totally you know? totally for sure in the common core yeah you know? and um the story does also go back and forth also to to the, the, uh, the author interviewing the the four guys yes and know? then also the vietnamese forces led by the senior colonel yeah, Giap. And, and you're getting a real interesting take too from the vietnamese side which i don't know how well that goes down here yeah. <laughs> you know but yeah you know but garth it really wants to show both sides of this you know and yeah and uh it's interesting because this senior colonel g up you kind of he's like the voice of reason and he's like yeah, weird, right? yeah. Hey, yeah he's like hey we're yeah. engaged in battle he's trying to teach the young assassin girl <clears throat> hey you know what i mean like your skills are valuable you're valuable you know what i mean and, and he kind of has that inept uh yeah he's too. got like an inept secondary he's to him. trying to kind of like teach right right uh, but i think he feels like he's hopeless he's got better chances with this girl yes. and this guy he's making idiotic comments his second is like oh the americans they hide behind their machines and he's and, like and they kind of show it too where he kind of like the colonel's like I forgot where he goes off to, mm -hmm. right? Like the colonel like disappears. Yeah, he's somewhere. Gone. And so something's happening and he's got to make a decision. Right. I think the girl kind of pushes him to like attack. Mm -hmm. And he does. And man, his hope, like a lot of them get, you know, wiped out by yeah. Frank's guys. And yeah. the colonel comes in and he's like, you know, like pull him in, pull him in. Exactly. You know, and I think the dude ends up dying. The commander. Ends yeah, up dying. he does. He, he ends up staying out there too long because he's like <laughs> always like, you know, screw yeah, the he's American. Like you know, you know, yeah, like he talks about the planes, you know, they hide behind planes yeah, and drop they, they just bombs. bomb. They, they, they don't even care where they're dropping them. They just drop them. Yeah. You know, and the uh, commander tells him he's like, or the senior colonel tells him he's like, if you, you don't think that if we had an air force like that, we wouldn't be using it too. And he's yeah. kind of like, oh, I never thought about that. And he's <laughs> like, okay, well, he tells me, he's like, go think about it and come back to me when you, when you figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Like he pretty much is like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. um, and he's trying to instill But it's this. almost too like, right? Like he's like, he's keeping him with him. To make sure he doesn't do anything stupid himself right with his, the other guys because this colonel is kind of like that too he just wants to make sure his guys stay alive yeah. too you know and he sees in the girl that she's just angry and vengeful they they show her story where they the yeah. soldiers come into her village they kill her her yes. dad and, the, and yes. the, it's and brutal the, it's the mom brutal. and i think they get Art. raped as well yeah. they don't show that but you get the impression and so after that, she's like, she cuts her hair all short, and she's just like, I just want to kill as many Americans yeah. as I can. But he sees that she's good at what she does. She's focused at what he does. Yeah. And if he can just get her and set her straight, yeah, then she can be a real, real great asset to the Vietnamese army to help get rid of the Americans. Yeah. Instead of doing it her way, well, she ended up just dying, and where she could have done more good, you know, training other people. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's an interesting aspect of the story, too, because, you know, her death comes near the end and it's her and Frank one on one. She initially gets to jump on him. And uh, <clears throat> this is interesting to be the beginning of the book, I think, because I think that like this author wants to know so much about like, a, I guess, a, a particular Frank kill. Yes, he does. And maybe this kill is definitive, but. I don't really think so because it was like huh. she jumped him. She was getting to jump on him. But, she's stabbing but the way he him. does kill her, kill her though. That that's then, interesting. I, yeah. Again, I didn't think about that too. Maybe you yeah. could say that could be his first real Punisher kill. Well, because Maybe. at the at the moment it was happening, all his guys had got uh, hurt. 
Yeah. Uh, now they're not dead. No one's dead, but they're hurt, and they're trying to call yeah. in the airstrike. The 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 they even don't have good batteries, right? Yes, they do. The batteries mm-hmm. suck ass. Like the ones they gave them are like run run out. They 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 have no more uh, energy in them. And what do we yeah. find out? They're like, oh, the that shitty artillery guy, the one that has all the supplies. He's like he sells the batteries to the yeah. to the Vietnamese because the ba- the batteries are worth so much or whatever. So yeah, they just, just like what the fuck. Yeah, they put in <laughs> uncharged batteries. So he has to climb a tree to try to get signal. They, and I think that's where know. she notices that it doesn't work because she saw them the first time. Like at first she couldn't tell what it was that he had. They thought it was a weapon. But, yeah, you know the radio. And then I think that's and where it was she them calling in the airstrike. And she sees it where they drop it. Like mm-hmm. he tells them just. You know, get rid of it. It's, it's useless. Yeah, it's fucking useless. So she she caused the death of all those fucking of their own men oh, and weakened their forces. But either way, at this point, she gets to jump on Frank. Most of the guys have retreated. He's got a few guys that are down. They're trying to patch him up. And they got to move out, and they're trying to get the radio to call in the strike. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, yeah, he fucking like she's got him. She's stabbing him and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But he drops back yeah. and drops her onto a rock. On a rock, yeah. It looks brutal. It's and very she brutal. looks. They draw her tiny yeah. on him. Like, well, yeah, I would imagine you know because you know she's probably five five, maybe ninety pounds, right. ninety five. This guy is like about six three, two fifty, two sixty. Oh yeah. You know, almost like a stone cold kind of way. Yeah. Or maybe even like a rock kind of <clears> way. You know. Yeah. And yeah, just. You know, ooh, are your momentum dropping back yeah. against the rock? You know, a, a fucking rock dancer? Yeah, I would imagine she had a lot of broken bones. Yeah, there. and it's they even draw her kind of like with her hands like, oh, yeah, fuck, I just like, got oh. like squished. Yeah. And uh, the only one that's seeing all this is the Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Dryden, uh, again, the African-American sergeant that he's kind of been, you know, mainly relating with throughout the story. But he's a shot. He's shot, I think. Uh, yes, he is. So he's yes. he's kind of waiting yes. to get drug out of there. Yeah. So he's kind of seeing this all happen. Like, what the fuck? And then the other guy's in the tree um, trying to call in the fucking the, the airstrike, airstrike or whatever. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> at that point, you know what I mean? The writer is kind of like, well, what happened next? And then he's like, uh, what happened next is between them. He doesn't them. tell him, right? Yeah. He doesn't but you tell see him. Frank over her with the knife and That's like kind of the like, kind of the <sighs> slash. I guess he cuts her throat. I was like, ooh. And I mean, I guess it, it's to me. I don't know. I'm on the fence, Double A. If that's like a Punisher kill or like a first taste of a of it a, it could be because this woman was doing something to him that he promised that wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's supposed to be saving lives, and then here's this chick that got the jump on him. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's not supposed to happen. That's I, not supposed I also to happen think. To him. I also think up till this point, he's he's been killing. He's killing in their in their shooting conflicts and he's having them drop bombs and yeah. he's even you know like i said we said earlier with the big gun he blew that guy yeah. but it's like a faceless guy this was like a one-on-one engagement you kind of knew it yeah and then it was a woman and then it was a he was bigger and stronger than her he could have maybe took her captive but again the the damage this woman did mm-hmm. and no because it shows him born he knows what's going to happen to the women mm-hmm so he's yeah. like, no, he's gonna kill him. Yeah. So he makes a decision. So that's a very interesting. I didn't give it. I'm giving it more thought now as yeah, we're discussing it, but it's a <laughs> yeah, very interesting <laughs> scene or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> again, you could say maybe again, that was, was kind of more personal because I don't know. She, like I say, she got the jump on him. Yeah, and they know? were engaged in like kind of like a, a one-on-one conflict, like a fight. It wasn't like when he'd been previously out. He's shooting people, yeah. shooting him with a gun. It's kind of impersonal. This was one-on-one. Yeah, drag out. Dirty yeah. fight, you know? and they and then the knife, you know, I mean, it's done with the knife, so it's close, and he, he cuts your throat. I mean, so it's a it's a very very interesting moment, but um, yeah, I didn't think about that at all. Yeah, oh, I, I hadn't given it too much thought either. But but <laughs> so wait, let me ask you something. So what do you think about? And and you're watching Loki right now, right? Yes, you're caught up. Yes, okay. Yes, so yes. I don't want to get into that because we're gonna definitely talk about that. Y'all know that we're gonna talk about that later, but. But, you know, we kind of talk about what happened in this issue and what happened in, in, in this uh, series. Again, six, six comics in this. Uh, it's it's a it's still like a, it, it's, it's very it's fast. Easy, fast. Yes, read. it is. Like, again, fast. It feels like you're watching like a like a uh, what Frank a Garth war Ennis, movie. You yeah, know what I mean? Frank Garth Ennis doesn't really put a lot of words. In there, <clears> yeah, so. Frank does have a lot of dialogue. But um, do you feel the way like, you know, we talked about again to like okay, Frank at, at this time. So so kind of like. To round it out, what 
everyone lives. The entire his entire platoon lives. You know what I mean? And that was his goal, and he accomplished that goal. Everyone stayed alive. You know what I mean? And that was kind of the the thing is that that's what he begins to earn this reputation of like. Frank Castle keeps his men alive, you know, so that's a good soldier. You know what I mean? Like he, that's a good leader. That's a good commander. He's doing what he has to do. You know what I mean? So I guess it's kind of like all these good things that lead to how does the one man become, you know what I mean? Where by the end of Mourn. come when you see this, this right. image that you're just fucking afraid. Because also at the end of Bourne, he doesn't, he's the only survivor yes, he is. of that attack. Yes, you know he is. Now, again, it's the result. Which not I find is kind of weird. You know? Yeah, again, another yeah. contrast. And again, in, in Bourne, it's not his fault that that happens. No. You know what I mean? No. He does everything he can again, but this time he's not able to save well, everybody. I don't know. They're going about to pull out, weren't they? And he kind of it tells him to stay in, to yeah. dig in. I, I need to revisit. It's been, I, it's, I haven't read it since we last read it. Because by then, he's completely lost. He's gone. Yeah. By then. I think he sees all point. the bureaucracy yeah. and all the bullshit. Here, he still... He's still like a Fresh dude that you can yeah. go up to and talk to. Right. My board is kind of like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. You know, you heard the stories already. And his his men are kind of in rougher shape, too. Yes, Those guys are, are kind yes, of more, are. more pieces of shit. Yes. But but here's my kind of question, Double A, is like, you know, we talk about, you know, and again, the only reason why I brought up Loki or whatever, because obviously it deals with these themes, but do you think, Double A, that there is like, um, is it like fate? You know what I mean? Like, uh, is it, is it uh could he not escape his destiny no matter what you know what yeah, I mean? like sure. like what once he once he had kind of uh again we could say he made that deal or whatever in 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 born or again, whatever but, but it's always a, a debate is that really going on or it's just that right is that him? in his mind is, is yeah. he psychotic you know? yeah like we said like I'm sure many guys come back and do go back to their normal lives and they never sure think they about do. it again. Maybe I'm they sure repress they it, whatever. Yeah. And maybe they have nightmares. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're just like, you know but what? Again, it was a time in my life. It's, and it's like he said, though, Sam, it's like when anyone is good at what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, it does go to your head that, yeah, you know, if somebody keeps saying you're the best, you're the best, you're, you're a guy that's going to save me and everything. You get that into your head. Yeah. Where if you go back to another place, you know, maybe you're not the best and people shit on you. You know, you kind of want to sure. go back to that person that you were. <laughs> you know what I mean? And what know. do they show in Three Kings, right? Fucking uh Mark Wahlberg with the copier yeah. and the ink all over, like, yeah. ah, fuck this, yeah. man. Like, you know, it's just like a shitty job, you know what I mean? And and uh what's his and, name and is and Ice you, Cube is throwing bags, luggage and, bags yeah, at the you fucking would get miserable, wouldn't you? I mean Golly, yeah. to go back to where you had a responsibility, you had purpose, you had a focus. Yeah. And over here, it's kind of like, well, shit, I got to worry about house bills. I got to worry about electricity bills. That's what kind of sucks about I gotta, movies. I got to hear this guy yelling at me. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> like you. I don't you think know? people like don't get it. When it's <clears throat> like you see something like Rules of Engagement with Samuel Jackson or even A Few Good Men with, you know, uh, Tom uh, Cruise. Yeah, with Tom Cruise, but, but with the two, the two young guys, Hal oh, yeah. and, and yeah. Uh, the other one. You know, people were like, oh, well, you know, sure, Samuel L. Jackson got discharged or whatever, or, you know, whatever. And, and those other two guys got the same thing, but they still get to have lives. And I'm like, you don't get it. Like, to them, this would be like, imagine being like, you know, uh, a college or professional football star, the quarterback leading the team, and you're good at it. Imagine being like Tom Brady level. You're winning. You're 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 finally found something that you're good at. And then the, someone tells you, you can't do this anymore because you fucked up. That's essentially what happened to those guys. I mean, that's what happens to Samuel Jackson Rules of Engagement. That's what happens to the two privates in in uh, in a few good men. Yes, they get their lives, and yes, they can go and yeah, you know, they can go work at Walmart as a fucking greeter <laughs> or whatever. But what is that like to them in comparison to like you know what I mean? Like I was fucking, I was doing what I was really good at. You yeah, know what I mean? And here, Garth Ennis kind of treats it like when the family died, that uh, that was just more an, an excuse. Right. To just go back to doing what he was just good at. Yeah. There is a what if book, right? Like, what if Frank Stanley had yeah, been killed? Yeah, I have it right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right there. So yeah. did you read it? What happens? Does he become anyway? He still becomes it. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> it's just makes you wonder. Like, it's always inside of you. You know what I mean? To to be. And that's what, like, that. Garth Ennis tries to show is, like, Punisher was born here. And his family dying was just an excuse for Frank to go back to mm -hmm. that lifestyle. Yes, he loved his family. He did. Yeah, but he loved doing this stuff. He loved outsmarting his opponents. He loved out fighting his opponents. He loved being vicious when he needed to be. He loved it. 
You know, yeah. there's no doubt about it. He loved it. Yeah, he, he did four tours over there. <laughs> and you almost get that impression that like, um, if there is an entity that was speaking to him in in uh, in uh, born, born, whether it was maybe the devil or or the the spirit of the the not the spirit, but the, uh, the angel, angel of death, death yeah. that was telling him. You know, like, you're hey, be you're, doing my work yeah, you're keeping me supplied. You're great yeah. at this. You're great. At, yeah. the, kind of the way, like, again, we talked about Walter White during the break, the way that Walter White was great at making that. Which was, he eventually just breaks down and tells Skylar, yeah, yeah I did it. For my, at he, the end, I started doing it for myself. Yeah, because he was the very <laughs> best, and he was yeah. knowing that he was the very yeah. best at making that fucking yeah. blue meth or whatever, and he was making a shit ton of money. He wasn't again, a scrub no yeah, more. he started off like, on a good purpose. You know, trying he Frank was serving his country, you mm -hmm. know, and, and breaking bad, you know, he's trying to save some money so his family can live off for that forever. Yeah. And yeah, they both just they see how good they are, what they do, and they both are like, I'm sorry, I sorry doing it for me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it might be a hard concept for some people to grasp it is. And, maybe and ourselves included, if we never really and I think that's you know? why Marvel doesn't really push the Garth and his punisher uh, yeah. as much because yeah. how can you how can you say, you know, all that kind of stuff with the with one of their characters, you know, right, right, <laughs> yeah. Know, like even DC kind of stays away from this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. I don't think there's any DC character that's like the Punisher. Well, that's why I think that there are instances in the Netflix series with John Bernthal, which is great and I love it, but it's still my second favorite version of the Punisher because there's instances in that where I'm like, that's not how Garth's Punisher would act. <laughs> that's not what he would say or do. I think he even like. And it's not a negative, see, but maybe I that's he, why Marvel comes in and is like, okay, we can't really go yeah. down this far like yeah. Garth is pushing. Yeah. Even though it's the most popular version of Punisher there is. It is the most popular Punisher. The definitive Garth Ennis, Garth Ennis Punisher is the definitive is Punisher. The Punisher. Yeah. yeah. If you know, like, Just like Chris Claremont X-Men is mm -hmm. the X-Men. Yeah. yeah. Like you you know that I liked Punisher before, even yes, with the white did. gloves and yes, white boots. Yes. But I really went yes. all in. And I even got you guys to. Well, you got Will. Will. And mm -hmm. then Will's a kind of you know, through you, sure. pretty much, he was like, "Hey, cat, you gotta start reading." Yeah, you know, the Punisher, which I did, and I was, I fell in love with. You know, I'm saying maybe next, next Fourth uh, of July, we'll actually do a Punisher, <laughs> Bar yeah. Bar maybe yeah. Barracuda, yeah, or something Barracuda, like that, because yeah. that's a great fucking yeah. story, right? Where like, you know, again, it's yeah. like the man, and it makes you think, right? You're like, man, how did you? How could how could the story be interesting if it's just like him killing it and how and I'm like, no, it's just so well written. It's a, again, there's there's unintentionally these people that gravitate around him or whatever and now he's like well fuck i have to like you know and then keep kind, you alive you know what i mean and it kind of shows like where these guys are pretty much ignoring what he became and just remember frank castle right mm -hmm. that's kind of like how they kind of remember him yes as yeah command or lieutenant frank castle yeah and they tell the writer they're like when you're over there and someone keeps you alive they let you come home have a family a yep. wife kids mm -hmm. grandkids they're like you're forever grateful to yeah, that guy. You don't care what this guy yeah. does, especially when it's a bunch of scumbags that he's killing. Right. It's like he's going out there killing innocent people, like right. you said. Right. <clears throat> he's killing mafia members, slave traders, sex, exactly. sex traffickers, you know, exactly. Russian mafia, Italian mob. You know, yeah. yeah. He's pretty much wiping yeah. out whole mobs by himself. But and not just mobs, drug dealers, you know. Yeah, you know everyone, everyone that does a wrong that hurts other people. Yeah, yeah, kind of really hard to feel fucking sympathetic for that. Those motherfuckers. But it's just the way that Garth Ennis does it that you're just like, whew. Yeah, you know, the way he kills them and everything. You know, this guy is not a hero, right? <laughs> by no means. And, and the situations that he ends up in, where you're like, fuck, you know, how's he going to get out of this one? You know what I mean? So, uh, guys, we're right up next. Well, I think it's going to be our last break, much, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. in this last block, we'll close out talking about the platoon. Uh, we'll invite you to join us with your comments, uh, questions, anything that you might want to know about this story or other stories, or what do you guys think? Uh, are you uh, are you bound by fate to be something, you whether, you, fate. whether you want to or not, or can you change it? And if you know, if somebody tells you what that fate is going to be, can you avoid it? We'll talk more about that in our last block right after this. And guys, there's no uh, commercial right there, so why I always say that, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to... Uh, figure out what i'm gonna say when i know we're gonna stop recording the audio and there's not gonna be anything there eventually this space is built for eventually there'll be more commercials and then once that happens then you know we'll put all those in but let's check out the comments double a c who's still hanging out with us and still has things to say about oh, uh, and actually it sounds funny uh Joe goes, what do y'all think about the old school white boots? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right we just bat. talked about that. Right off the bat. Yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, Jim Lee drew it pretty cool. It still looks yeah, okay. Got, yeah. Oh, right there. 
that one. Yeah, right that's there. a great yeah. one. Yeah. And I used to read a couple of the magazine size versions of that one, and it was uh, it was pretty gritty still. You know what I mean? Like the 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 uh, the stories there. there certain the costume, times, you know? it, it's certain times, whoever gets him that first, they write Punisher really well, but then they dip off. Right. It's always somewhere right. along the way. Garth Ennis was like the first one that actually kind of had it all. Yeah. The way it was like Marvel left it alone. The the comments were selling. They're like, let Garth Ennis do it his way. Don't don't get involved. Yeah. So, and it came out under that uh, that Max imprint. So when you're under that that Max imprint, that allowed you to kind of like. There, there could be sex. There, yeah. like, there could be yeah. sex, tits, blood, gore, and there's not a lot of that in Punisher. The sex with it, but you like the white boots? Is it? <laughs> no, he definitely looks much better drawn <laughs> by Steve boots, Dillon. Right? Yeah, he looks great drawn by Steve Dillon, and he looks great drawn by no uh, white boots. Guy. No but white it's boots. It's funny yeah. though. We do like Undertaker with purple gloves. That right? is true. We do like it's that. Right? Much different when you're in the ring. Yeah. yeah. So that that's definitely a difference. Uh, Joe says bug bitings. Fuck that. No repellent. Uh, he goes, I got to read this. You know? Yeah, definitely uh, check it out. And then he goes, uh, good leader brings his man back. And Frank did. And Jason from Hondo now. Hey, what's up, Jason? We got Arlington. We got Allen. Now we got Hondo. Oh, man, we get, we get, we're get we running the gambit on Texas tonight, yeah. folks. So we appreciate it. Oh, you know what? The, I'm, the one reason why Fight Under Steve is not here with us right now is because he's in Ohio, I forgot. Okay. So, Steve, hope you had safe travels. And I know you can't join us because you're up in Ohio uh, with family. So I hope that's all going well awesome. for you. Check awesome. it, check us out later if you get a chance. And then Joe goes, I think you can change your fate if you want to. Interesting, interesting. So I kind of bring that up too because I feel like, um, you know, I was listening to this podcast today. You know, I listened to the Morbid podcast and yeah. a girl was talking about, well, one of the girls uh, was talking about that uh, her, I believe her husband's, the one that's married, her husband has a, I don't know who it was, but someone in the family has like a true quote unquote psychic in the family or whatever. No, like, no, you know, I mean, again, that stuff is not able to be proven, but let's just say you had a family member that always got shit right or whatever it was. And then I guess the old wives tale goes like, if you're born with like a veil on your face, like that you can be born with, like, I guess it's like a membrane or something okay. like that. Some babies are born with that, right. that that means you're going to be psychic or whatever. So okay. they said that this person in their family that had those abilities would do the readings and all that. But that she wouldn't just tell you the good things or just the bad things. She would tell you, I'm going to tell you at all or not at all. Like, so you're going to get good and bad or nothing. Uh, and a lot of people are like, just tell me the good stuff. Or stuff. <laughs> so she was, she was saying that their grandma would never want to get it done because she's like, no, because she's going to tell me good or bad. So it, it got me thinking. I'm like, if somebody tells you like, hey, you're going to you're going to die by falling off a ladder. It's like, OK, well, then now that I know that, can I just avoid ladders the rest of my life? You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Like, will fate intervene and make you have to be on a ladder one day? Like, you know, it's it's a, uh, you know, it's a whole kind of that. No, it's scary, of, and it, it's a story that's like as old as the Greek mythology. You know, you know that's where you get Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. It's from you know Greek mm -hmm. mythology. You know, she gets super curious about what's in this box. She lets out every kind of fucking thing there is, and once she's finally able to close it. The last thing that was supposed to come out here was knowing your fate, knowing how you're going to die. I mean, mm -hmm. golly, that's terrible to even know about, you know? So, yeah, I mean, that's the shit that's all this time right there. Not knowing how you're going to die, not wanting to know how you're going to die. You yeah. Know, fuck that. Yeah. So if you <laughs> uh, could know, Double A, would you want to know? No, I wouldn't Just don't want to know, no, right? I just want to live my life the way I'm living it and not be afraid yeah. of anything. You know? Yeah. So. I, I mean, I, I think I think so, too, because then I think you become kind of consumed with maybe yeah. avoiding it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to avoid yeah. that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. You know, but um, it's kind of, that's kind of what I was thinking about with Frank. I'm like, man, was he – was it meant to be he was always going to be – See, that's the thing know? that Garth does really well that no one has ever, ever had touched on the Punisher. Uh, was the Punisher born, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, born, you know? Right. I mean – Was he or, or wasn't he, so – Because how, how does this dude just come out in a comic book world it's just – you know, blasting everyone, you know. Right. You know, right. Like, and it also adds so much depth to the character too, where it really did. You know, where yeah. he, you might have just thought like, oh, this guy's a psycho, a gun nut, you know what I mean? And in fact, they make fun of him in some of the cartoons the are tick. like the tick, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh you know, and, and it's like there's and the way Archie more to him really that. didn't help. Right, right. Um, Archie versus the Punisher. Yeah. That didn't help either. Doesn't Foxy Roxy own that she one? She loves that one. Loves she that does one. own that one. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. <laughs> um Jason says, what's going on this weekend? Double A, you know anything? 
anything up this fourth of july weekend i'm just gonna be july. spending it with my family yeah so. brother not much uh going on here i'm gonna be doing some i'll be spending it with uh probably some of the time here with double a uh but as far as anything going out and in I'm the world enjoy my three-day weekend so <laughs> yeah yeah anything going on in the world of pop culture uh jason not this weekend but next weekend yeah, black widow uh black widow and yeah. then also the show uh where Rick's Comic Crypt will be out at the Shrine yes, Auditorium. Uh, Jason, yeah. Well, you know what? Um, I don't know if I would recommend that one to you, Jason. Uh, that one is more the cards. Ah, I more cards. Yeah, like yeah. Rick will be there, but I think it's going to be like the last time when you and your pop went. Okay. You remember how your pop no, was a little well, bit pissed off? No, he was saying that, but I would have oh, liked okay, to well, your pop, how, yeah. He was kind of a little pissed yeah. off. But he didn't even look as good as you. I would like to go well, and look at my eyes. That, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. But I think Rick was really the only major like comic book guy. Right. There. Right. That one's like going to be cards and like grading. Like I'm going to be there because my brother really wants to get some of his NBA cards uh, graded. And JSA is going to be there. So he really wants to try and do that. Uh, cover some of the the more expensive cards he has. So, nice, yeah. Very I mean, nice. And, you know, just put him in the hard case. You know, and just yeah. you know, sell it when you can. Other than that, though, Jason, we don't know any about any specific events going on this weekend, <sighs> especially not around the world of pop culture. I don't think Traders is having anybody out. There I didn't weekend, see anything. Uh, I was looking all week. I didn't see. I anything. think Fourth of July is going to just keep everything kind of tied up with that well, stuff. I'm sure man, people are so. going to be going to Traders though. Oh yeah, Usually, yeah. yeah there'll like always be guys out weekend. there. Uh, we went uh, <clears throat> last weekend. I went last weekend and walked oh, around. Uh, um, Rad Comics was closed. But okay. um, yeah, right. they were not open. But uh, sure. we did go to uh, Toy Matrix and we saw okay. Bobby, and uh, that was cool. And I kind of peeked my head in Andy's and looked around. Um, didn't get, I didn't get anything <laughs> wow. actually. Okay. Uh, what, yeah. what were we looking at? We went with my my lady's family, and we were like, we were doing like the classic like aisle by aisle. We went early though, like when it first opened, like at ten, so it wasn't too high yet. We had our kids with us. Uh, they got somebody got a Godzilla, I think from. I don't know if it was from Gary and Bobby, but it was somewhere. But right. but we were just doing the aisles, man, and, and seeing stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was okay. It got hot, super hot. So if you can avoid the heat, brother, avoid the heat. You know, find somewhere cool to hunker down. And, and Jason, uh, how are you, you doing know? anyways, man? You still doing good? Still doing well? Yeah, brother, let you us know. know how you are, man. You're doing okay. How's the Red Hulk hunt going? Uh I see Red Hulk stuff, man. I think about you automatically. You know what I mean? Like figures yeah, and here. Funko Pops. Here. And I ran into a few of them, but not the issue that you wanted. So. Right, right, right. So, yeah, but, um, yeah, that's all good stuff. Um, let's get back into the recording, Double A, so we can yeah, finish out. We'll leave off. the comments open, guys, so you guys continue to join us. But we're going to wrap <clears> it up here on the Punisher, the Platoon, 4th of July edition, guys. Yes, sir. Uh, comment on us what you think, what you heard about us say about the story, if you haven't read it yet, or what do you think, you know, do you have any uh, thoughts on, on the fate of the Punisher? Was he able to avoid it, or would he have always become that? Or, um, you know, fate in general, can you avoid whatever your fate is? Is it predetermined? Are we all walking a path that we can't, you know what I mean, uh, a, a sacred timeline, so to speak? That's what they say <laughs> Judas did. That yeah. all he was doing is going by the plant. So yeah. yeah, interesting, interesting. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. We're in our last block of this week's episode. Now, don't forget that uh, next week we will be coming to you super early on Wednesday in the week because I will be out of town on Thursday night and Friday night. So we're going to record early for you. Do we have our topic settled down yet? Yeah, I think we do. Okay. okay. Uh, there no. Back. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's gonna be really cool. You're gonna like that, guys. Uh, next week's uh, topic. Um, so please join us for that one. I think that you'll all be able to chime in and join the conversation um, for sure. And uh, it's going to make it fun. But uh, yeah, so let's get final thoughts on the platoon. Double yeah, so okay. So reading this, would you say it was a really good prequel? To born? What would you say? You know, what would you what would you say about so it? So let me tell you. So this is how I approach this with the double A said, why don't we do the platoon for the fourth of July? And I immediately thought, what a great idea. Cause it's like the prequel to the book we did last fourth of July yeah. and it's Garth Ennis and Garth yeah. Ennis. Again. We love Garth if Ennis. If it wasn't Garth Ennis, I wouldn't even have suggested it. But, honestly. but he hadn't read it yet. And so I said, read it first and then tell me what you think. Cause I had, I thought we could have also done a, a, a Captain America story that I wanted Which double we, A to read. We will. We will that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause it would have good, gone good with 4th of July. But the only reason why I questioned it, it wasn't just like, yes, because I thought through my first read, it was a little slow. I was like, that's ah, a little slow. Like, you know what I mean? But I reread it last night for today. Um, 
And I was like, man, what a beautiful story. <laughs> exactly. I was like, wow, it really is really good. And it made us both think, as you guys heard us hash it out right now, which is what I love to do on this show is when we both, like, I'm having new thoughts right now as yeah, I talk to you. Exactly. Uh, like, you know, you said it several times tonight, but new thoughts on this book. And I was like, man, what a powerful story. What an interesting insight to this. I mean, you know, some people might just think the Punisher and not think too much of him, just maybe some of the, the bad movies and that's it. But man, no, 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 no. You got to read the Garth Ennis version of the Punisher, uh, especially these, the platoon and born before he's the Punisher. Yeah. He's still in Vietnam, yeah. still commanding Marines. Uh, I would say start off with these first before you go into the Ennis yeah. run. I would say re platoon, reborn, and then head straight into the, the first, you know, welcome back, Frank kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's did. I would say read those first. These two books read like 70s movies, 70s they war really movies. There's yeah. the grit, the grime, yeah. the the you, you know what I was gonna tell you? There's really no comedy in this. No, it's not funny. It's no. not, you know, maybe that second tier Vietnamese soldier that's kind of a dumbass, but but even then it's not it's not <laughs> lighthearted, you know what I mean? And I get it, not everybody wants to read something heavy or whatever, especially in the times we're living in right now, but but it's a very, very great uh character uh development man where you get to really understand frank castle uh from his time being a soldier uh right up until becoming you know the punisher you know what i mean and and uh kind of what that what that means but uh yeah, I, I am glad that we did this one. It was a good choice. I would highly suggest reading it. Uh, it, it was definitely a two reader uh, that made it much better. And then, of course, it always helps when you have someone to hash it out with, and then you're like, "Oh man, I really fucking thought about that." I mean, like I said, it just really shows what a great writer Garth Ennis is that we actually can actually debate about this. Mm -hmm. You know, like, is it fate? Did he snap? Was he always psychotic? Did he always have that in his head? Yeah. What was it? Because he has a beautiful wife. He has two kids, you know, that mm -hmm. he loves more than anything. But there's just something about it, about the war, maybe about the brutality of it. Maybe that's just, it's clear to him. Yeah. That is more clear to him than living this life that he would have to live a lie almost, you know, be miserable, be not happy, yeah. uh, you know, be flipping burgers on Sunday. You know, that didn't seem like he wanted to go back no, to that. You know? No, or maybe it was like, you know, we said it by the end of this first tour and he slashes the girl's throat because she's attacking him or whatever and she's the enemy or whatever. But maybe there's a moment there that he has a realization or whatever about something. You know what I mean? And he tells himself, I got all these men out alive. I did it. And maybe the next thought is and the next tour is like, well, now I got to get the next group out alive. And then the next group, and then and that's all like, he's thinking. It's like right. this: they need me more, which is kind of crazy, right? Yeah, they need me more than my wife and kids, right? You know, these right. guys that I need to get back home. But it's know? kind of a Mister Spock thought, right? Uh, the way, the <laughs> yeah. needs of the many outweigh the needs of the yeah, few, which, but... which is kind of the Hurt Locker again, where he says they need bomb techs. But that this guy knows that his guys are getting blown up by the dozens, and you can do something about it. Don't you do it? Is yes, it with great power comes great responsibility? Yes, but you also have a responsibility to your family. That's true. That is true, too. For I better or for worse. You know you what? Know? Those men are probably better men than me because I would stay with my family. I would put them first, which it might, make me, me, might make me selfish. You know? I don't know. I, it's I don't know. It's, it's an interesting thought, too. And I think about the fate question, too. You know what I mean? Like, you know... Uh, I want to read that. What if you have now, you know, what if his family didn't die? Would he still become the Punisher in this yeah. version? It says yes, but he wears white boots in that one. So. Oh yeah. That's, that's like the early Punisher. White <laughs> boots will make you kill. That's you. <laughs> and that's, white gloves. And white gloves. That's some murder. Maybe he likes seeing the blood though. I'll Maybe. Be gloves. That could yeah. be it. That Maybe could he likes be seeing it. the blood. You know, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's interesting to think about. What are the comments here? Double A. <laughs> Uh, Joke says, what do y'all think of Abomination in the trailer of Ten Rings? Oh, before I answer that question, uh, double A up for, uh, I'm going to change the color on you because I feel like you're super, I want us to match. We don't match the color scheme. Well, the white was really bright on me. Uh, yeah, so we're going to change that one. Um, but what do you think about the Abomination in the trailer? Uh, I think that's kind of weird. I didn't know Abomination had that issue with Shang-Chi or whatever. Yeah, Shang-Chi. Yeah. Or he uh, made it. I was like, wow, okay. Uh, he made it over there uh, <laughs> yeah. to, to uh, yeah, China? Yeah, I was like, abomination? I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, it, it's just weird when, you know, certain, like, he's a villain of the Hulk. 
it's kind of weird to see them somewhere else. You know, <laughs> I guess it's neat that they're like mixing it up. Like they're sure, like, okay, we're sure. gonna get these other characters in there or whatever. I but... mean, I like the domination. He's a good villain, a strong villain. He just always gets his ass kicked by by the Hulk. Yeah. So you know, that, that's the only guy that he really gets his ass kicked by ever. And so it's kind of like, well, you kind of see to do it as a joke, but he is a powerhouse. He, he's yeah. a huge powerhouse. Yeah. What I noticed about it, Joe, um, and I, I guess we're done talking about the platoon now, but uh, we'll wrap it up with you guys just hanging out and talking and shooting the shit. But uh, they put the little gills on him, yeah, which is great because Finally. here was my thought. When I saw that abomination, that movie, I was like, hey, he looks pretty good, except like, why not make him look more like right. the comic book? You because, made yeah. him look that cool. Yeah. You know, like, but that, that's fine. And in fact, I remember thinking when I saw that version of him, uh, was like it kind of made him doomsday ish. Well, doomsday looks like abomination, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then when I saw, um, what is it, uh, the fucking version of the lizard in the amazing Spider Man one, I was like, that kind of looked abomination ish, like the skin wise, because they didn't give him like the pronounced snout, like it. a lizard no, snout, which I was it. like, why, why can't they do that one thing, they like that it. one yeah. thing of change? And yeah. the, so, them adding the gills, maybe that also adds to that his mutation is. Or whatever's going on sure, with him is, is sure. changing him, but that's like okay, cool. He looks more like abomination. -ish I was now. always kind of hoping they would have bought the leader in. Uh, they never did. So yeah, yeah. It was hinted, but they never did. <laughs> but yeah, interesting way to throw it is, and then they all say that Wong is there from Doctor Strange. Okay. So I'm all like, right. okay, Shang Chi. Like, right. I mean, I get it. You're bringing some people in so that they can be, I guess, connect the universes or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's but, cool. I like you know. that. That's cool. Yeah. At least it's, you don't leave them like this. Only has to be here. This only has to be here. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's a fine <laughs> little, uh, fine little uh, shot. I'm just of, bring in Wolverine, yeah. please. Yeah, please. Just drop in some X Men about the other X Men. Yeah, just bring in Wolverine. Cool. Yeah. I mean, Abomination's back. <laughs> I mean, that's neat. Is Tim Roth going to do the voice uh, in that one? I wonder. You know, so we'll see on that. Um, I just want to see Wolverine again. <clears throat> New actor? Sure. I just want to see the character again, man. That's my favorite character. I did fucking you, love Logan. Did you read anything about this book that's going to come out? The way Superman and the Authority. It's called Superman oh, and the Authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just it's not has nothing <clears throat> to do with the Authority. Oh, that, that other team. No, it's like a it's about a team he creates. Uh, but the way they draw him looks cool. I think that it's the Kingdom Come Superman. But it pretty much looks like he's wearing like a kind of like yeah. a short sleeve shirt, but with like uh like with like these kind of like gloves or whatever, which really? looks kind of cool. It's very reminiscent of this drawing I've talked to you about before that I really loved that Jim Lee did for Wizard when it was like what his yeah. Superman would yeah, look yeah. like. Yet when he drew Superman, he didn't draw him like that, but it still looked pretty cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I was kind of reading about it or whatever, and it says he kind of I guess forms his own team, and one of the guys he gets on the team is that guy from the Elite, that that leader of that. Elite, the really? Manchester Black, the one that wore the yeah. Union Jack shirt. Yeah. yeah, so supposedly like he so, recruits him. He's not happy with Justice League, so he creates his own team again. I guess. I or may, well, it, it, <laughs> I don't know DC that well, but I think didn't at some point Superman and the Kingdom Come Superman were both coexisting. Yes, yes, they did. And yeah. so maybe it's that version that's creating this team because he looks like that. He's yeah. got that S on the black. I wish they could have let that Kingdom Come Superman alone. Yeah. Uh, Do you like it as a potential future for Superman? Or? Yes. No, I love okay. that as that. I yeah. just I don't want to see Kingdom Come Superman all over everywhere. Yeah. For me, that's like the ultimate Superman. That's him at his very best. The peak. Yeah. Yes. I don't the, like where the, Kryptonite doesn't hurt him yeah, anymore. That was I mean, awesome. God, yeah. that's awesome. I don't like that in that story that Lois died. I wouldn't have mind seeing him get with Wonder Woman eventually and have a family, like, but like years after when like you know humans can't live past a certain time, like, <laughs> you know, down the line, like some futuristic version of them or whatever, you know. So, but that's just me. I don't like the the lowest dying thing. But uh, uh, Joe, what did you think of the Abomination in the trailer? Was that was that all for I you? Just, all yeah, good. Just again, you know, just for me, it's like give me Marvel, give me Star Wars. That's all I want. Yeah. And if DC ever gets their shit together with Warner Brothers, man, give me everything DC has to offer. You know, uh, I want to see Superman, man. I want to see more Superman. I want to see Black Adam. I want to see Green Lantern movies. You know, I want to see Martian Manhunter movies. I'm there for Marvel it. Marvel's giving me everything I want. You know, even stuff mm -hmm. that I didn't know I wanted, they're giving it to me. And yeah. I'm happy with we it. We didn't want the Guardians of the Galaxy. We didn't want fucking right. want the Guardians. We're, you know, like, we're to, Fantastic Four. Yeah, to be honest, we didn't, we didn't want a lot of stuff, but we were okay I with it. I didn't want that, man, but I enjoyed that, man. Yeah, I didn't want great. Guardians, yeah. but man, those two ended up becoming my favorite. Sorry about that. Those two ended up becoming some of my favorite movies. Yeah, I uh, could say I didn't want Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I didn't want that either, but yeah. then I enjoyed that a 
want. I didn't want Wanda and and Vision. That was I didn't think I was gonna want the year, and then I was like, who? Yeah. Loki, and, I did want. Yeah, and I'm getting. Them. I have three Loki T-shirts at home. I have four. <laughs> I have four Loki. I didn't shirts. realize I loved the guy that I much. I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah I, was I was like, oh, Loki I really shirt. do like oh, Loki. Yeah, yeah. And I thought Richard E. Grant playing that Loki was fucking awesome. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But he reminded me of the '60s Loki that they used to draw. Like, yeah, he looked old. Now, who's that actor? Tell Richard me about Richard E. Grant. Mm -hmm. From you don't know? Oh mm -mm. uh, shit, uh, he's uh. I know Jack was... Seward from uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, wow. The doctor that shoots himself up with morphine. You remember Anthony Hopkins' his protege, protege? That's that guy? Yeah. Oh, man. He yeah. aged, huh? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, you, you ever seen the movie Warlock? Yes. Yeah, that's him. The one that's chasing after Julian Sands. Oh, I don't remember that guy. I just remember Julian Sands. Oh, okay. Well, he's chasing. It seemed like a lot of people were hype about that yeah, actor. I mean, Richard though, e. Grant's yeah, Richard Grant's awesome. Yeah, I okay, like Richard Grant. Okay, there is, okay. People were thinking that he was going to play Mephisto. Oh. That's what everyone was assuming. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so we got to do but, it. But I like the way he Mephisto looks. Mephisto watch continues. Because he looks like the 60s Loki. Yeah. He looks like that ugly yeah. Loki that Jack Kirby <laughs> used to draw. You know so I was like, yeah, that's awesome. Definitely, man. Yeah. So, guys, that's all I'm going to say about that. We won't say anything more, yeah. but if you're not watching Loki, start watching it it's right good. away. It's good. I like super it. Good. It's good. You know what? I just started watching Double A, uh, to, you know, burn through as uh, Rick and Morty. You know, it's ah, always been okay. it's always been uh, revered, and I, I'm probably late to the party. Uh, uh, my yeah, my girlfriend's so. kids love yeah. it, you know what I mean. But it I've is, never seen it, and I'm probably still not going to see it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, there's no need. I mean, you know, it's just something for me. Like I like to watch them during oh, well, my yeah, lunch. It, you it know? blows up. I mean, it's everywhere. Everywhere oh, yeah. I go, it, there's pop culture stores. Ricky Morty are there. So it's super hilarious. They're in Fortnite. You know what I mean? They're okay. coming out. For, it's super hilarious. I've got through season one already. It's like 22 minute episodes, and yeah. it's cool because they're on HBO Max. They put all the curse words in there. Nice. So, uh, yeah, but it's very hilarious. I I would rank it already with one season. You know how I feel about like Family Guy and American Dad. I'd put it over to those. Well, I know you're never really big on Family Guy, right? Yeah, you're, you're the one of the guys that are like, eh, it's yeah, right. it's funny and there's good episodes and there's funny characters, but it's just not like to me. Like I never got to Family Guy. I it's fine. Like some of the episodes, I think they they drag on. Just, Shit's yeah, long, so. yeah. I thought the Brian and Stewie characters were well done. I'm like, they should have just had their own show. You didn't For really me, need it's, the other it's really hard to top the the first ten of seasons of Simpsons or first two. Oh, right, those yeah. are just fucking hard to beat. Yeah, yeah. And, and I I even say in the later seasons, there's still a lot of really good shit. Every once in a while, I'll catch like a new episode and I'll be laughing just oh, as much. Man. It's still good. I missed like 20 seasons of yeah. the Simpsons, which I didn't think was possible. <laughs> you know, I was like, damn. So. Yeah. I'm yeah, behind 20 seasons. Oh, they have a great Game of Thrones one with oh, uh, with okay. Duff. They okay. Duff, the Duff throne and the <laughs> Duff. They mix it all in, and it's you know they do a great job of that too, like blending the yeah, stuff. It's yeah. not just like oh, this is a ripoff or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but uh, yeah, I love The Simpsons. Love Futurama. Uh, oh, I know you're big on Futurama. Oh man, yeah, because yeah, it's way way underrated and like is. That's fantastic. what everyone says. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. everyone says. Check my Facebook for my. Uh, pictures with me and my lady were Fry and Leela from from yeah. the drama. Uh, speaking of that, real quick, because I might be making a trip to the Dallas show in September. Uh, he's going to be there, the voice of that dude, Fry. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. that's pretty sweet. Yeah, because what, what, what's it? What's his entire fan expo? Yeah. Oh shit! Anybody big names yet? Uh, for me, because they just announced like a lot of the comic creators. The big one for me is David Finch. Oh, that's love nice. David Finch. I, oh man! So right now they just announced. You know, just a few, but him and Greg Capolo are the, Ooh, the two bigger. Right that's now. also good. But Finch is one of my all-time favorite artists. I love Finch's stuff. So, are you gonna go for one day or go for a weekend? No, I'm just or... gonna go for that one day. You gonna drive up and drive back? Uh, yeah. No, that. Uh, no, I might do like what I did this last time. Which what did you do? One day. Well, I one drove day, to night? Waco. Okay. And stayed there. I didn't even oh, do cool. the whole uh, trip because I was like, you know what? We're leaving at six thirty. It's yeah. gonna be five hours, almost damn near five hours. Yeah. And I'm like. No, I'm gonna stop in Waco and it helped. Yeah, it helped immensely just driving like that okay. three and a half hours and then drove the rest of the way Saturday morning. So, so you went, you left Friday night, stayed in Waco that night, mm -hmm. then you drove the rest of the way in the morning to yeah. Dallas. Then it was great. You got a hotel or you went straight to the no, show? I went straight back home. Okay, that day. Yeah, so after you did, after your, I did my stuff, I you, came back home, okay. which was fine. I was, you know, I wasn't tired, I wasn't sleepy, or me and my wife enjoy it. We make stops, you know, yeah. Here that's fun, so like a road it, trip. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it really cool. is. Okay. And we make trips and we make stops and it's fun. And 
you know well let me know keep me in the loop about dallas maybe i'll want to like just because i can make part of it like me and uh, my lady just hang out at dallas like spend yeah. the night one night yeah. at a hotel or something like yeah. that and then come back on like a sunday morning or something yeah. like that if you're going to do like a one day because yeah. i would love to meet capullo and that she was down with me to, when we did the the Houston one, but she didn't like she didn't like the the drive. But my dad helped her. That's I know that's yeah, it, it is rough. <laughs> it's yeah, pretty rough. Oh, I know. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. that's why that's why I decided to stay in Waco this time. I was like, no, nah, fuck that. That's cool. It helped. It really did. Uh, did you have dinner there that night or anything like that? Actually, just... no. We we had dinner here, okay. and then we stopped at Bucky's hours later because just to grab some sandwiches. Okay, yeah, and oh, then like that's it. But then in the, in the morning, we found this really great Mexican restaurant. Oh, nice. That we stopped uh, to eat. We we stopped. She had her coffee. We had in Waco breakfast. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, awesome, uh, man. Yeah. And we, I've never been. Like, I'm sure I drove through it, but uh, yeah, you probably way. drove yeah. through it. No, with you probably have. with yes, you. <laughs> we have. Yes, we have. Yes. Yeah. You see sure. Baylor with the the big old lights, the birds. Right. That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jason says, uh, "Have we seen Fast and Furious? The new one I is it out made, already? I stopped at six. Yes, I, it is out. I haven't seen the new one yet, Jason. I would watch it. Is it like on – can we watch it on streaming? No. Okay, you got to go to theaters. Okay, so you got to go to theaters. Uh, I probably won't rush out to theaters for it. I'm waiting for Black Widow. Um, my nephew wants to see Boss Baby 2. He says Boss Baby – he liked the first one a lot. So, <laughs> you know, Alec Baldwin, the Boss Baby. Uh, but, I man. got three movies, I believe. I got Black Widow. I got M. Night Shyamalan's movie coming out, Ode, mm. which I really want to see. And apparently that's based on a graphic novel. Okay. I'm and, in. I'm in for Oh, that. and the purge. Yeah. Did you see the trailer for the Green Knight yet? No, I haven't. Oh man, you gotta watch that trailer for the Green Knight. Okay. It looks super fucking good. Okay. Cool. Uh, I definitely want to see that one. Uh, I don't know if that comes Is out it this the year. King Arthur. Stuff? Uh, it deals, I think, along those lines. Yeah, but the lead actor is that I think his name is Dev Patel. He was in uh, Slumdog. Oh, okay. the, the main okay. guy from Slumdog, okay. whatever. But he looks a little bit, oh, you know, they give him a beard okay. and stuff. It's right. pretty cool. Okay. But the way the Green Knight looks, man, it looks like it was done by like Guillermo del Toro or something like that. But I don't know who directed, but it looks really okay. badass. You, right. you'll, you'll definitely dig okay. it. Uh, Jason, have you seen Fast and Furious yet? Uh, if so, what did you think? Um, no, I haven't got out for that one. Uh, again, I have nothing against going to go see it. If somebody wants to go see it, I'll go see it. You know, I just haven't made time to go see it i'm just thinking about black widow you know, I'm, I'm like out of all those i've seen like six six of them i the first one's still above yeah all the rest of them yeah. to me even when they got really super crazy and people were like oh i was like oh, i'm still on board it's fine i i know it's getting more insane but i'm just like that's right you know what i mean like, you know i like when they hop that one car from one building to another <laughs> the cars look badass the girls are always super hot um i did not watch the hobbs and shaw like the full the full way through but from what I saw, I mean, it's like, okay. Uh, it's Texas like, said it's good. Person. Okay, it's okay. Or it says it's okay. All right, then. Okay. All right. Would you suggest going to go see it, Jason? Should we make a trip out to the Cineplex and check it out? Let us know. Let us know. But um, besides that, double A, anything else? No, man. Just, guys, have a great 4th of July. If you're military, thank you so much for your service. CM's got his flag waving out there again for Absolutely. the Boy Scouts of America. Absolutely. They do yeah, this really yeah. cool thing. I wish you would come over here uh, to – for that, that it's a really cool thing that CM says that they do. It's really cool. Um, so happy Fourth of July, guys! Stay safe. It's going to be a busy week. I, I think this is like always one of the busiest weekends. I'm going to be barbecuing with my family, so that's what I'm going to be doing and just nice. relaxing. I'll come over and get some barbecue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you? Um, let me see. Yeah, we're going to a barbecue. Uh, my girl's brother's going to barbecue on Sunday. Okay. Uh, Saturday. You gonna watch a hot dog eating contest? I don't know where channel is that on ESPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I'll it's on Fourth of July. I'll, 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 I'll have them put that on Which, and check uh, that out. What's his name? Joey sure. Chestnut, <laughs> the reigning champion. Man, what happened to the uh, the guy? He blew him out. To, man. To, to no, Goody, he blew him out a long time wow, ago. Wow, really? Yeah, he doesn't I'm even do it anymore. I'm behind, man. Joey behind. is a killer, man. Okay, he, no one has topped him. He's still on the Iron Throne. I need to catch up. I'll do some YouTube. They have a great thirty for thirty on that on the Kobayashi. Chestnut view, dude. Thirty for thirty kills the game, man. I'm yeah, telling so you. So that's always a tradition that we've done. Uh, we always go to my dad's house, my mom and dad's house, and we grill something real easy, real super easy, and just watch the hot dog eating contest. Pretty <laughs> badass, man. It's fun. And Good when tradition. They, they win the the mustard uh, heavyweight belt. <laughs> it's a yellow <laughs> hot dog belt, dude. That's awesome. When I went man. to Coney Island, that was like one thing my brother requested. He was like, "Please get me a hot dog eating contest shirt from <laughs> from Coney's." 
Dude, uh, awesome. Does he have that? It. Yes, and he does. And he Very usually wears cool. it on 4th of July. So. Very cool. And Jason answers. He said, no. no. <laughs> Not worth the trip to do. Well, we'll wait until it comes well, out on HBO We're going to go for sure on, on Black Widow. Yeah, so. we'll be there for that, man. So uh, let us know. You're going to go check it out. But, guys, uh, we're glad that you joined us this uh, Yeah, thanks for joining us. 4th of July weekend. Yeah, we yeah. appreciate it. If you're checking this out after the fact, we appreciate that, too. Um, guys, I want to tell you uh, how much I can't thank you enough to our 55 YouTube subscribers. Thank you so much uh, for you guys subscribing. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. But specifically to you, 55 YouTube subscribers, thank you so very much. We greatly appreciate it. And I want to tell to all of our listeners on Anchor and Spotify that just listen to us just on the podcast form, thank you so very much for supporting us. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. It means the world to us when we see that you know our show got listened to, you know what I mean, uh, however many times. It's really awesome for all of you that have just joined us just only here on Facebook. We appreciate you as well. Thank you so very much for that. Uh, and if you listen to us on any other format, iTunes, um, <clears throat> again, like I said, Spotify, Anchor, uh, Breaker, uh, Amazon Music, uh, Pandora, guys, we're on all of those, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, I just had someone on my regular Facebook feed ask today for podcast suggestions, and I'm not shy about uh, <laughs> telling them to listen to ours, give it a shot or whatever, you know what I mean? And, and I suggested some other ones too, you know what I mean? Uh, you never know someone's taste, but uh, pop culture may not be for them. But uh, each and every one of you guys that do certainly, certainly, we both appreciate you. Yes, we do. Uh, we yes, definitely, we surely do. <laughs> we want to do more for you guys as much as we can. Let us know. Make some suggestions. Tell us what the things you want to talk about we or have us talk about. We didn't know a lot of you, you know, yeah. uh, when we started this. And now we have, like, so many friends now. So. Yeah, and things are opening up and we're getting out more. So that's great, yeah, that's too. Awesome. Uh, so all of you that are away from San Antonio tonight that are not uh, from here, uh, safe travels on your way back. Uh, those of you that are just at home that are away from here, that's awesome. Uh, spread the word in your in your neck of the woods about just another Friday night. Uh, and we definitely do got some new stuff coming up for you guys uh, in way of merchandise, uh, but uh, more details on that to come soon. But um, anything else, Double A? Yep, just All have right. a good weekend, guys. Yeah, have a good, safe, happy 4th of July, you guys. Happy birthday, America. And uh, as always, uh, we'd like to say at the end of every show, guys, if there's something that you want to do, a dream that you want to accomplish, a hope that you have, you got to seize the day, guys. Uh, Lieutenant Frank Castle had a mission to keep his men alive, and he did so Ooh. successfully yeah. on his first tour of Vietnam, 1968, outside of Khe San, um, a young platoon commander. Uh, Frank Castle, who who would become uh, more infamous, uh, <laughs> and in this book it says it itself. It says the very thing yeah, there. It does. Frank did whatever it takes, guys. Also, just like Captain America said in Endgame, when when it came time to bring everyone back, they got to do whatever it takes to get it right. That that was also said here, written by Garth Ennis uh, in the platoon, the Punisher. Uh, Frank did whatever it takes if it meant bending the rules to get his men the right guns, the M14 over the M16. So that they wouldn't have jamming and could fight the enemy. Uh, he did that. Uh, he brokered that deal and got that done. Um, so, guys, that's what we say at the end of every show. Seize the day and do whatever it takes. For myself, CM Chuck. And double A. This has been just another Friday night, guys. Have a good night. <laughs>